starting to record. Okay, so we have an exciting day of enterprise development. There's, um, we're going to continue where we left, left off last time and see what we can do. And also, I just want to mention that this is all voluntary. Like, if people don't feel like participating in this, um, can't force anybody to participate. We, we want to encourage everybody to participate, as in the overlap between this work and what we do normally through the collaborative literacy training and the, and the design training on a house, this should all be related and reinforcing. Um, so that's the kind of, uh, that's the nature of what is intended to happen today. We want to make this uh, quite relevant to what we're doing in the other days. And how do we do that? So let's go to the working doc. And uh, I'm going to go into edit on that. I will share my screen so that I'm also recording. Well, let's see. Screens, entire screen, go live. So take a look at my screen there. And OK. So global call up there. So I, I do have uh, this whole agenda mapped out for today. So I, I do want to talk about a lot of topics, like including the enterprise development and how it relates to the incentive challenge. First, um, just to wrap up from where we are right now, we're, we're building a lot of things in the workshop. We're towards finishing. Um, I just wanted to show the, just for everybody, since, since this was hot on my mind, I was actually working on this today. The second story door detail, uh, that's all complete. But it turns out, in that particular design, uh, the design that we have, you can look all the details. But the point is that it's a very simple design. The header and the door fit such that it's exactly like the lens as if as if doors were designed exactly for the header, because uh, the, if the door is right above the header, it it matches the eight foot module exactly. So we don't have to like add any spacers above the door. I just found that very interesting. And you can take a look at the full CAD pictures product link. Uh, this is for the kind of an exterior doors that we're working on, so you can take a look at that. Okay, so regarding the incentive challenge, um, what's to be said around that? I think that uh, we can frame around the relevance of it for, uh, the way I'm looking at it right now is an absolute realistic way to lower the cost of, of the building materials. I'm envisioning a, a reduction from 50K to 25K. And I think using the technology that all pretty much lines up, I was thinking more about how do you scale to multiple print heads? How do you, I mean, the, this thing's gonna be heavy, like we're, we're talking about um, huge build volume, as well as very heavy print bed. In our design, we, the bed moves up and down. So it's actually, uh, you have to do counterbalance, counterweights in order to make make the bed work like this. but. I was thinking about how do you scale the heads and what kind of print rates can you get, but I'm envisioning what I see right now as a clear possibility is an 8 or 12 head printer, which where we're not printing, uh, like, okay, that would get into some issues on control software, but let's do it a very simple way where the heads are repeating. So we're printing like four panels at a time, either four um, or possibly up to eight, or we're printing dimensional lumber pieces. So question there is, how feasible is that? I think it's highly feasible. Every single head can, can do 20 pounds per day. So if you've got a number of heads that are only a multiple of our simple extruder, which is very low cost, most expensive part in it is the stepper motor, which is $8. And the rest is like the part, uh, bill of materials for one of our extruders, is it's under $50, it's around around there, I don't know exactly, but it's definitely scalable for making a lot of them. And using ramps, super simple, the ramp system, which we use on a printer today, you can use external stepper drivers and you can do uh, off, out of the box, using the kinds of stepper motors, step, actually the larger stepper motors, the NEMA 23 and the stepper drivers that are larger external ones that we connect to ramps, you can readily run four, four we do already with the existing ramps. 
we can do eight with the larger and these are actually larger motors still but we use a larger stepper driver so kind of getting technical in here but eight or twelve are completely feasible at a cost of eight dollars per channel I mean this is it's ridiculously low so it's so talking about uh, the electronics are completely affordable so the ramps is you know it's like 25 bucks for that board the overall controller it's like a hundred bucks with its components plus like maybe like if we have 10 heads that's like a hundred dollars more for the controller but really not much more there's more wires wires are like a couple of bucks each but uh, so then the, the stepper motors they cost like 40 the large ones that we want to use so so we're talking about a huge machine now either 4x4x8 four by four by or like 4x2x8 by we can get away with 2x4x8 four, you can print four panels at a time I'm thinking if you print the panels um, you can be going if we design the panels in a like say just the, start with the frames okay if we do the frames or even frames with the sheeting sheeting on the front you can approach it as you've got four heads in a line and you're printing a quarter like each head prints a quarter so you've got each head printing a quarter and with 12 heads you're actually doing uh, one panel in quarters and two more panels in quarters so it's like oh man that gets very interesting if you have 12 heads like that with existing technology of 20 pounds a day you're talking about uh, 12 times 20 240 pounds per day what we want to do is probably load up in, a, in the morning so it's like okay operations load up 10 spools of 20 pounds like spools we're gonna have to make a big filament if we're using filament so big spools it's gonna get to, to the size of welder wire spools uh, but half the weight I'm thinking a lot of small spools you can load it up in like 10 minutes in the morning you can make yourself a few thousand dollars not, not a few thousand each panel costs right now each of the panels we make costs like 200 bucks or between 100 200 so if you make four man the productivity there is insane like uh, if we do a lot of multiples of the heads using existing technology so I'm just trying to focus okay let's strip down this problem of uh, 3d printing uh, let me actually turn on my uh, I've got the video here on this camera let me, let me actually close this up can I close get this a little closer so the angle is better um, so I want to I want to just like describe the uh, I want to get you all excited about the technical feasibility of this because uh, I was looking at it today again so I actually got up really early today I was thinking about it quite a bit I'm trying to come up with what would make sense uh, given the constraints and opportunities we have uh, but technically speaking not inventing anything you like all existing technology we know we can do the frames last week we actually went through a simple design of a frame that's based on rebar trusses and the price point there was ridiculously low it was good uh, to the point that the entire system I'd like to keep it uh, the lower cost you have it the more you can talk about we're gonna scale and every city is gonna have this and we're going to actually solve plastic waste and we're going to solve part of housing with this so at the same time this is more ambitious than anybody's done because nobody makes printers this large for plastic that I know of there might be some special application of printers uh, maybe they made bigger printers than this I, I think I've seen things like quite long printers or whatever but I've never heard of anything that's actually high temperature chamber and that size because even like the Fortis I think 450 or something by Stratasys still tiny it's got like a I don't know 12 inch maybe 24 inch chamber and you get to pay $250,000 for that for a high temperature printer like that so, and we're talking way more than that uh, so this is the goal is insane however can we understand the technological feasibility well uh, let's let's talk about this because if we can understand it we can um, kind of provide leadership on it so I think the the print heads we can absolutely scale I just mentioned a little bit about that using external strep stepper drivers we can readily do without running into like 
critical issues oh now we need some new stepper drivers that don't exist or like large motors or something none of that we've got it's all there uh, so on the stepper drivers and the extruders which use the stepper drivers um, extruders will actually still use the small stepper drivers the, the, the bigger stepper drivers go for the axes um, not a problem frame not a problem we've done decent sized frames um, heated chamber I don't think it's a problem. Look at the wiki, uh, high temperature heated bed. I started the part library there. That that's not hard. It's an insulated chamber made of steel, or the outer shell of it doesn't have to be steel. It could even uh, be a lower temperature material because once you get away from the inside, your the inside is 200 C. You got insulation, and outside it's like you can touch it. It's fine. So. I don't see problems with the insulated chamber. I think the only technology we have to develop that I don't see as particularly hard is the the enclosure on the top that I think we went over a little bit. The enclosure that keeps all the the parts that are sensitive, the electronics and anything that's plastic, um, the electronic electric motors, the circuit boards, everything is outside the hot chamber. Nothing is in. Only the head is peeking through the shroud and it carries the head carries its shroud. Now that would be a big shroud. So we probably want to do like a, probably like a, like a frame with some fabric or a PEI or like carbon fiber blanket was, was one idea. It's very, very light. Uh, PEI, that's pretty light too, the, the high temperature plastic. Um, so I think we can do that. Technically, yeah, I'm seeing glory. The size is huge. I think most people can't do this because, or like it gets expensive because, um, frames at that size it gets heavy and big and until we experimented with the trusses the rebar trusses which I would actually suggest definitely as like this is the lowest cost you can ever make for a frame that's strong because uh, we've done the 16 the 20 foot trusses with the rebar extremely strong it's stronger than 2 by 12 lumber uh, with minimal structure of rebar half inch rebar so that looks really good um, thinking out loud here man this is I think it leverages like all of our strengths uh, and the strengths of where 3D printing is right now like or its weakness right now which is there's really no large 3D printers that are open source there's absolutely no high temperature 3D printers outside of say the experimental one from Michigan Tech University uh, they've shown the proof of concept but that's not exactly a high temperature chamber like we're talking about here it's limited um, some of the parts, some of the sensitive parts are in a high temperature chamber. Uh, so we're talking about a simpler design. I mean, this is looking so sweet to me that I think we can aggressively uh, call out other people to say, let's do it. Um, I was thinking, I was thinking OSC puts up 100K. I looked at my budget, got scared because we got to pay back our loan <laughs> by the end of the year. Uh, how about we do something maybe a little lower, like uh, I could do 25 I think we can do 25k and then let's get 10 or 12 people companies private individuals other allied people and let's say let's find 12 people that can put in 25k and that that I think will be a very significant reward um, and then we have the ability to make large large things I can definitely see the, the plastic lumber or like the entire frames that we're talking about with the, the frames for the, the wall modules and things um, it looks really good. It looks really good. That uh, so I want to take a look at just to show you. Um, take a look at this value. So I was thinking about value proposition. I was thinking about okay, here's uh, for the incentive challenge. We know we got to break down the tasks if people who are collaborating on it here. Um, there's various tasks, but okay, let's talk about the value proposition. How do you get a bunch of people together and organize the interests? Uh, so I kind of drew up a map of of the value proposition. Um, but check this thing out. It gets even more wild than before. So this is how do we design a partnership? So let's go through this um, View present. How do you design a partnership? To line it up to solve housing with a thousand square foot $25,000 house That still is built in one week. We're cheating on that because that's after you have the modules while solving plastic waste with 3D printing, sweat equity plus job job training part time for uh, I won't go into those details. Okay, concept. Next page. Uh, 
I'll, I'll go with this. So you got a house. That's the house. What are all the parts in it? Um, so this is one model out of many things that we can say, okay, imagine we had the ability to collaborate with a bunch of people and use the same model that, say, Habitat for Humanity uses, which involves 400 hours of sweat equity from each person that gets a house. Uh, and I mention Habitat for Humanity because in 2018 they, did a, they helped about 8 million people worldwide. Uh, that's from their annual report. 8 million people were served, so either by a new house or renovation of an existing house. So they're, they've got a track record and their price point is, I think it's sort of like around like 130,000 for a small house. Um, but that's a good com company to benchmark against. But taking the, their sweat equity benchmark, let's say that's realistic. Um, now, if we deliver on the promise of 500 hours per house, that 400 hours could be completely that time that the owner builder uses to get trained and builds modules. I could see that happen. So say we, we're, someone still has to coordinate it because there's a lot of moving pieces. So OSC would do the coordination. I could see OSC provide the equipment pool in the form of open source, both heavy and light equipment like cordless drills that are open source 3D printed, open source tractors. So you'd have a community equipment library that's city funded. Uh, we put all the equipment in there for this operation. What I'd like to see is a city, uh, and kind of the KC, it's already you know had a discussion with some other people, and, and they said, if you need space, you, you could have it at our offices. And I think we can probably uh, find workshop space too, either with city interests or community land trust, hacker space, or um, whatever, whatever is in the interest of public interest development, community co economic development organizations, and so forth. I think probably around in big cities you can find s such support in many places. So um, into this is feeding this incentive challenge that makes things lower. So right now the costs. Let's see. Let's see. Um, so I'm envisioning so. You know, question mark BNIM, question mark Habitat. BNIM is the architects from Kansas City, the world renowned architects. Okay, pro bono building department submission package. All the details and documents for that. Let's have an architect contribute that. I think we can find that. We can aggressively pursue that. We show them this map of this cunning, super cunning plan, which is just the, just the draft of a possibility here. So, Pro bono open source design with LOD 500 FreeCAD. Level of design, level of development 500 FreeCAD. We were working on it. It's pro bono, or it's open to the world. That's OSC, OBI, uh, maybe the people who are contributing remotely and everyone else. This is, it's happening. That, that part's happening. You need a good design, which I think we have. And uh, we need to generate, from this we need a, a package that we submit to the building department, including possibly a uh, structural engineer's stamp, because the way we build is not, it's not the standard way people do it. It's a little different, but it follows the, pretty much the same principles. So uh, along with this, what else do we have? Uh, the land, I think local governments and land trusts, I think free land is abundant. Uh, like for example, the they actually give away land to, to people in the United States if you're willing to move. Like some cities give away land because they want people to move there. That's That would be like in the middle of nowhere. In big cities, there's typically land trusts uh, where they hold a bunch of land that's that's confiscated for back taxes, like repossessed land. I mean, land trusts get that. Cities end up owning a bunch of land. So I think land is tractable. Uh, the discussions on Tuesday I had with the architects and Brian and Jesse indicated that free land, like, yeah, we could do it. I think that's possible. And not only that, but I think pretty much replicable in many locations, like um, also like Paul said, that in Detroit there's ac good access, very low cost. Uh, so it could be, I, I think that's you know, how much can you scale that? Well, that's one model here for the absolute rock bottom cost, but if you got to pay for land, 
your normal cost is 25k in a, for an urban lot um, and then much lower for rural lots you can easily find a thousand dollar lot if you don't mind being in the middle of nowhere if you're a teleworker so what else is here so I'm seeing so I see the incentive challenge I, I put the 25 K's as getting a bunch of corporates and allies foundations individual sponsors chip in for that OSC could be one of them um, house module printer infrastructure yeah I think that does make sense and then I could see the modules a lot of the the materials that we use being replaced and I could see the the half half going down to half cost uh, and that requires like say we're we're trying to scale this program we might think we need a 4,000 square foot facility if you're gonna crank these things out 4,000 square foot that's what, what our workshop is and there's margin there's hardly any space there because we have a lot of stuff other stuff taking up space like right now we pretty much have maybe a quarter of the workshop open actually for working um, so imagine like a thousand square feet for working like I, I see two thousand square feet for working which would be like eight bays of 256 square feet and then the rest of the other half would be tools and everything else uh, stuff like that but I think four thousand square feet would be enough for a, a micro factory to produce these modules at a quantity uh, with 12 people at a quantity of of one per week you could do like four per month I think in a 4,000 square foot space like our our workshop that's that's what I believe in from the okay. evidence I have uh, four okay. house kits oh, okay. the actual, the whole, the whole house okay. everything prepared and we ship it out to the site and install it in a few days so we can sell those kits we can sell the turnkey build here I'm talking about this uh, 25 thousand dollar house how do you get to twenty five thousand um, well no I don't think you, uh, that's like too many things would have to be free someone else is paying for stuff if you're paying twenty five thousand but someone else paying for it, it could be your printers paying for it by printing your own modules where you're getting a lot of the materials down to the cost of electricity plus waste plastic which probably ends up being um, as low as like two cents a pound I think um, you could get down to probably like a dollar a dollar instead of five dollars uh, I think dollar is very safe I'm, I'm, I'm thinking like even like 20 cents uh, 20 40 cents per a two by four if you're printing electricity and waste plastic if you've got the infrastructure now house module printer infrastructure if that's going to be a hundred thousand dollars that might work if it's going to be five thousand dollars it will work everywhere if it's like ten like probably five to ten K is probably the, our goal for an entire robust infrastructure for doing this but then then again you need heavy machines to move stuff because if you're at this level you're talking about tractors moving bales of trash and, and like stuff like that uh, so it gets into a heavy material handling operation but um, 100 modules at 100 bucks average. Well, right now, off the shelf materials, we can probably do. Well, no, no, sorry. The 100 mod modules, if you have the 3D printer, you could easily do like, like 100 bucks per module. But look at that, there's an arrow from open source appliances which don't exist. So that would be a, that's a hairy block right there but once again take each of these elements and make them happen like open source appliances open source refrigerators open source washers and so forth that are once again 3d printed and then you've got some electrics electronics in there but 3d printed stuff like open source uh, micro factory stuff um, that feeds that but at that level 100 modules at a hundred dollars average is like 10k for materials and I'm so I'm saying like 25k for materials even if we're buying like 15,000 more stuff for like things we can't make right right now like whatever wires or something um, but going towards like 25k with about a hundred pounds per module it's like those are the kind of numbers we're looking at they may be very rough but but I, I think once we have the house 3d printer module uh, house print house module rather yeah both the house module printer 
house module printer is what the device is and that module the 3d printing module yeah that's that feeds low cost materials but take a look at the next page for a little bit more about this so so, so the narrative i think right now we can do something like if we went to kansas city right now maybe we could do 75k and what i see there um 50k materials without 3d printing let me escape out of this here um i'm seeing um 50k materials without 3D printing and then 25k with. So I think we can half the costs with 3D printing. Um, so I could see several options there. If we do the turnkey build, like if it costs 50k, there's a bunch of labor. And if we're actually getting paid, I think we can do it for, for uh, 100k, which uh, a lot of people would question that. It's like the architects on Tuesday said, mm, can you do that? And I started explaining uh, a lot of the details. I think they were kind of seeing more and more. But that's that's like people are going to doubt this because that's something we got to show. And I think I think we're going to show this uh, once again the 50 and 50 model, 50k for materials, 50k for our build service. We go in there and build everything. And they doubt it uh, because it's too high or it's too low. It's too low because they can do it for 200k. Therefore, according to their model, you can build it for 200k. So I'm trying to tell them, well, we have these other elements. One is efficiency. It could be sweat equity. It could be um, the panelized, the, the kit part. When I heard the kit part, that it can be kitted, that's when I said, yeah, okay, that's getting there. That could, could make it happen. Um, but definitely their model involves professional builders, standard practices, and all, all that. Too many hands in a pie. Get the get the sweat equity guy, the owner builder involved. Get machines involved. Get like 3D printers involved. They're not counting on any 3D printing. And well, we can't for the 100k either. Now it gets a little better. I think right now we could do a 75k sweat equity house if the owner, like in Habitat for Humanity, does a lot of the work and we train them. So imagine training a bunch of owners like that for a pilot and delivering houses at 75k. Well, I think either at 75 or 100K, we can get investors for that. Investors like, let's say a low profit investor, not someone who's making a killing on this because this is supposed to be a, about social social justice. So let's say we do something that's, that's rent controlled. So definitely uh, addresses a city's uh, affordable housing need, right? So we're in the city. We're in with the lenders. It could be private lenders. I don't necessarily see like I could see maybe private individuals who invest in this as people who have money obviously but private individuals not necessarily banks banks could work but the banks are um, if they have low interest yeah I mean but once again we try over time we try to get away from banks as as, as in the whole funny money system uh, and try to create more authentic forms of currency uh, at the end of the day. But I think this, uh, if you have something like this, then you can get somebody who's, who gets low-cost rent with rent-to-own arrangements for the sweat equity guy. That could be it. I think that aligns a lot of incentives for this to be very low-cost. Did you guys get that? So you're saying instead of upfront paying the... 100k or 50k we get supporters i think a lot of people would do that if they were guaranteed a return and the return could be rent but these guys are renting to own so they'll pay pay that back right. once they paid it back enough it's their house so the lender wins and the house owner wins at low cost right that's that's one thing that's always in the back of my head like people just may generally not have that available. they're not so let's go to the free package or near free so i think we can go to 50k for what i just described if we have the 3d printer because we just took off 25k so sweat equity plus 3d printer um so that's sweat equity there now the sweat equity could be various forms for a, for a prototype build we can do a swarm we can actually charge for that for an experience a city would like that so it could be a good way to prototype but in the more replicable way it seems like 
have a house owner over a year put in that 400 hours of sweat equity, a family like in Habitat. So we have a great model with Habitat. They do it all the time. They require 400 hours of sweat equity for every house, for every person that, that's in there. So if their model works, maybe we could make this work. So there's, there's at least a precedent on that. Uh, so the sweat equity is the replicable one, I think, highly replicable is the sweat equity of the owner who's got an interest in this very low cost house. Um, vested interest and they're also going to do it maybe like rent to own so you're financing it right. I mean people typically pay a huge rent and they get nothing out of it and you just get poorer over time so you have lower rent for one like like ridiculously low like make it completely affordable and you're working and you're and actually moving toward something and you're <laughs> moving to ownership to equity building so you're not just feeding speculators you're not feeding entities like Berkshire Hathaway, which owns half the land in this country. Um, I mean, you see Berkshire signs all over the place. I can't believe it. It's like, man, a single organization owns all this land across the world. Anyway, um, so people are building equity. And then 35K, I could see 35K, like in a, in a package, we've got 3D printing, most of it, most a lot of the materials plus we really optimize so probably we could charge even like we could probably make it go with even like 10k of a service fee per house and we make it work uh, right now I'm seeing 50k if we're gonna actually like not go broke doing this right now um, I could see 25k if the builder we take 25k OSE and organizational effort required machines and everything else behind it um, 25k I think could do it if the person puts in significant sweat equity or if we're actually getting revenue from some other place to cover our time which would be like the immersion experience build the swarm build which where we are getting paid for it um, but in the first one like right now just tactically speaking like just to show it just to get the first one out there we don't need to necessarily make money on that just as long as we cover costs um, but the ideal ask would be uh, say to the city right now, I mean, let's talk about practical opportunities. I mean, okay, get us some free land, get us people we can train, let's set up a program for training, uh, give us 4,000 square feet of space where we can set up this micro factory where we train people, and we'll build with a swarm. So, also, let's bring in the other architects who are going to get the code stuff through codes, through the building package, which then is reusable for the same model as a precedent for many places. So we just have to do the first one. And then as we expand to all the different models, we can uh, modify. So I see something like that. Uh, and then, so 35K, if we print the materials, I could definitely see 25K in materials, like no problem. Like we can replace like half the materials right now if we had the 3D printer. And so so I'm seeing a possibility of a $35,000 package. Now, if we could deliver that, and that's still the thing where it's the same form or rent to own arrangement with financing, I think that's it. That, that would definitely do it. Uh, so like, what are the requirements for this? A lot of the elements we, we got to build up in this here, like, that's why I see, so this is kind of like, going into the incentive challenge like is there value to doing this I think yeah I think I think uh, I think you know trying to evaluate is there purpose and, and like high chance of success on this I think there is there is definitely the plastic waste stream uh, the technology we were ripe for the picking in terms of our ability to do scalable machines using known technologies we're not inventing any new technology here we never do uh, we're innovating on just re rearranging technology into a different form. And the technical challenges, I don't think, are super, super high on this what we're trying to do. So it would boil down to getting really efficient, good design. Uh, in building the infrastructure, th doing things like a bootstrap printer, which allows you to, to make your machines at very low cost. So maybe like one of these micro factories in a city, they can produce the the house panels but other places would actually produce the machines like the 3d printers so 
Uh, but we got to start seeing if the numbers add up. But I don't know. I'm thinking that this is quite worth it. And uh, I could see this model. This is just a rough sketch, but I mean, it's a very rough thing. But I think something where <clears throat> you can start looking at who are all the players. Like, can we actually invite people? Okay, here's this cutting plan. You know, what do you think? First of all, get it reviewed. Like, say, talk to Brian and Jesse. I think they're. So, Jesse, I think, is coming on. On Monday, he's a business development guy. You know, okay, does this work? What do we got? We didn't talk a lot about like vets. There's funding for vets. There's funding for training programs of all sorts. So if we plug into all those elements, I think we can assemble this. So right now, what we can do is people who are watching this or you know, as we publish this, and then uh, go forward with incentive challenge, talk to the people who are potentially be the co-funders start nailing this down does this work I'm gonna to talk to my mentor about this uh, what do you th you know what he thinks about this um, but I'd like to do some like I mean we're, we're doing elements of this like right now we're doing uh, like this thing the that bubble there that's what we're working on right now you know we're all this is our stone soup here and the things we're putting together and maybe some other people can come in for the other things right uh, definitely the the house owner with equity is going to be interested. Um, it's definitely in the interest of some communities to give away land. Um, I call it on-job training because I, I, on-job training, apprenticeships, on-jobs because we don't want to be promoting the same economy that exists, which is all proprietary. So here, like, we're literally on-jobbing people. So imagine, like, say we say we develop the, the house build thing the unjobbing in it, I could see it as there's entrepreneurs that know how to do it, and we farm this out to people who would otherwise work crap jobs. So we're displacing crap jobs. I actually looked at is construction a crap job? So I googled that, and I found it's one of the most low lowest job satisfaction areas of all the trades and of all jobs. Uh, it's like the people who rate that with like a survey, big survey, they said like 2.7 out of 5 stars, but said it was like in the bottom 9% of job satisfaction. So it's, yeah, I mean, maybe we can convert it to something better as it becomes more interesting or, yeah, yeah. I mean, we, we got to make uh, open source collaborative design happen to to make jobs less alienating and, you know, serve more direct needs. So um, on many fronts, this is, um, <laughs> I mean, we're like, potentially killing off all these, well, working towards all these other things. I do want you to look at this 10x is easier than 2x, so I think. Um, you can kill something, kill it, much, much easier than you can just double something for various reasons of psychology and largely psychological reasons, but also very practical reasons. Um, but take a look at that, I think that's very interesting. So we are definitely calling for like 10x this housing bit. Um, so with collaborative design, I'd like to see this incentive challenge happen and I think it meets a lot of, well, meets a lot of different areas for what we can do. Now the question is uh, doing the technical due diligence to say these are the exact things we're looking for in this printer. So very specific. So I, I can work on that. I want to work on that. And then I would ask, what what do other people want to wor work on? Or maybe uh, start with some feedback on this whole package. Or maybe feedback on... Because one thing I'm kind of noticing this apprenticeship, I think a lot of times it's... Uh, uh, I put There's a feedback. I, I started an OSC apprenticeship feedback form. So it's just a simple form. Like, what's working for you right now? what isn't working and then how can we improve things my submission says so I filled that out and I say visible visible progress is happening it's really cool to see those for example the panels and everything and the learning the collaborative learning it's happening I think it's kinda I'm, I'm appreciating the long learning curve on it though like I thought some of the things would be easier but that's because I live in this and it's I've done this and I forget that it takes some time to learn it. Um, what's not working? I think I'm not clear about some people's goals, like um, goals as in, 
like for example we had the enterprise session and people were like um what was the thing that came out of there um oh i thought like the, there would be like complete buy-in to say oh we just work on this whereas now we're basically questioning like okay what should we do um so i'm not really clear about what people's goals are if that's the case anyway that's that's was my observation that's kind of my my feedback what can we do to improve things Con continue to clarify commitments and goals because i think a lot of this is about defining things so i mean that's my feedback please fill that form out that'll be good and i'd like to do that like week by week like if there's very specific things because right now we just got a taste of all this but uh, i think definitely we want to focus on a feedback to see what's going on and uh the other feedback i'd like to see is uh so maybe um, like after school, you know, I'd like to talk to all of you, like maybe we could go like meet <laughs> after school. Uh, so when I think we're going to look at, uh, let's try for Wednesday and Thursday for the enterprise nights, because Brian has his class on Tuesday and I want Brian to be here since he's good on enterprise. Uh, so Wednesday and Thursday, but maybe like, like Monday, Tuesday, and Friday. Uh, I want to talk to each of you, and so so maybe like we can set up a time to talk. But like let's just go for a walk down the street, and you know we can talk about stuff. So maybe like go for a walk, where we can just talk one on one, like w what's working and stuff like that. So, what you first Monday? Yeah. Just you and me. All right. Okay, <laughs> let's go for a walk. And uh, yeah, I want to hear like because you know there's limited time. We're all kind of busy, and I want to make sure I get good feedback, and you know we can bounce around ideas. The more relaxed setting. So that's that. So definitely do the OSC apprenticeship feedback. Where is the form? Where do we find the form? Uh, click on it so you see the today's n note sheet, today's uh, working doc. Uh, so you you access that through my logger day nine. We're at day nine. Uh, I can paste it. Where's that? Uh, I'm kind of confused on that. Uh, I'm gonna put it under Apprenticeship 2021, the last last thing within Discord. Um, oh wait, did that link it? Maybe that didn't link it. Let me link to that form. So that's the Discord thing. Uh, I put it in a chat of Apprenticeship 21 Discord channel uh, ongoing events. So maybe right now uh, we can feed back a little bit on. Okay, so regarding this incentive challenge, what what could others contribute, or is this going in the right direction, or should we pivot from this, or no, nah, this sucks, or we gotta do something different? Um, but the idea is collaborative design, so what, what do we collaborate on, and if, if we're doing the house, we, we want to... I think this is a great chance to, like if I'm selling this to people, this is a great chance to involve a community much, much greater than ourselves. Because with the incentive challenge method, we're talking about if we do what we're saying, which is 250k, and that could be a conditional thing. It's like I can go to people and say, we're going to get 250k when we do, or if we do, can you contribute your 25k kind of this conditional kind of a thing so we know that we have enough energy behind it because but at that kind of money you're guaranteed to have thousands of people show up and we just need some of those people to be really good and maybe a lot of small contributions um, but part of that is completely related in how do we train the people to collaborate using the kinds of tools we're using so let's say you want to do rapid CAD design uh, or effective design as a team, we pretty much have to onboard people. Okay, here's here's the wiki, here's the docs, here's the part libraries, here's collaborative design and FreeCAD like we're learning. Uh, and so everyone's uploading and downloading uh, in an effective way. So we're all building on it. So everyone's actually working together, and we devise the incentive, the, the reward to be such that rewards collaboration, meaning how much you have uploaded and how much you built upon other people's work. So we can go into the details of that, but I think the first thing is a rough ske sketch of uh, a, an announcement posting. And I think the critical thing there is the value proposition, which is, okay, this 
this specifically what we want to achieve as the technology because we're, we're just developing this technology but if it has these specific outputs like yes you can take trash and just about any trash and we have some formulas for what really works and you can build construction materials or other things with it that in itself is pretty powerful so um, I think you thought about um, yeah. like maybe another Kickstarter or another campaign like that or do you just want to try to maximize the funding from thing us is, from people and then just do it the YouTube social media organic kind of way Kickstarter typically sells product so it's not I don't think this is most well suited for a Kickstarter because on Kickstarter you typically don't do a development event okay. but on Hero X it's all about development events it's develop this it's a collaborative challenge it's a design challenge well all except all of them are non-collaborative so I think that platform the choice of platforms maybe matters for that. If you do Kickstarter, like people are going to say, well, what do I get? Typically, a lot of the audiences there are, what am I getting? And they are getting it, but it's not a direct product. We're not selling the product. We're developing it. Right. So I think it's a different phase. Once we have it, we can take it on Kickstarter and, <laughs> and basically use Kickstarter as a marketing thing. Yeah, I just, I just threw that out there because that, that's like the most familiar one. But I know yeah. there's other platforms like that that fill different spaces. Yeah. I don't know of anything other than Hero X for incentive challenges that that's well known. I mean, are there any other suggestions besides Hero X? I don't think there's anything that's similar to it. Uh, it has good following and it's got pretty powerful projects there. There's a lot of a lot of big money projects, like big projects out there uh, on the platform. So they definitely have some traction. It's a spin-off of the X Prize, so it's, it's spun off the the work of a person. Peter Diamandis, who, who created the X Prize, mm -hmm. and shows this exponential thinking. Uh, so, yeah, I think uh, don't know of anything better. So, any feedback here? And so I'd like to maybe hear back about feedback and commitments because we can work on this. Um, the parts that are relevant is, for example, the teaching other people how we collaborate here. So puts forth some rapid learning materials on it. We're going to need that. We're going to have some uh, a need for effective training of the other people that are going to join because if we don't train them properly we're going to waste a lot of time so we want to do really nice concise and high quality onboarding materials for people that are going to collaborate because we're a lot of a lot of this is about creating culture. So in terms of this being on a global collaboration day we're re really like a big part of this is how do we train people to do this with us that's the thing so that's definitely relevant to the day-to-day -day here uh, if we learn that the more we we learn about that the better we are teaching others but I, I think that could be a good exercise for one of us here to say okay let me try to put together an instructional on how we're actually doing that so you definitely could help on that I don't know if someone's talking. I can't hear anyone. No, we're not. Can, can I hear that? Okay. Um, yeah, I, I, I know. I personally would. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm finding myself a little overwhelmed by, you know, uh, you know, the vast amount of content and kind of wading through that to find the, you know, the things I need when I need them to figure out how to use things. So I definitely see the value in. Uh, uh, definitely see the value in creating kind of materials that are more concise and maybe even in addition to concise videos like things with screenshots that are just easier to kind of reference quickly instead of having to you know because if you see an hour-long video you know who's going to sit and just wait through that until they come across that one thing that they need um so so i i, I like the idea and, and be willing to do what i could to help develop those materials um, and more more generally in terms of general feedback about what you've been talking about earlier today um, uh, I, I'm wondering about the, uh, the f I wonder how much we should put a focus on the build the, on, on the house application of the 3D printer um, for this and I don't know if, if you're in, intending to do that but um, you know 
because what people working on this would be doing is they're, it's really a focus on a printer that's using, you know, recycling plastic and, and, and that itself is, is exciting. And we could talk about the applications and, and, and one application would be to the house. But, yeah. but I think we have to be careful not to say, look, you, we're going to build a house. And, but no, we're looking for people to help develop this, this technology. Yeah, uh, maybe that's a better way to go. Just be more inclusive and that would qualify for more inclusive because the house is one thing. Maybe someone else has a completely different motivation. They see, like, they're completely excited about something else. Yeah, so I think we should probably pitch I mean, it this way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and I mean, my biggest issue, and I've actually been wanting to ask about this, uh, you know, in, in my own life, I'm always trying to minimize my, you know, use of plastic and stuff. And so, you know, that's the one, um, you know, quandary I have with, uh, with 3D printing, you know, and, and just printing a bunch of plastic stuff. And so, you know, being able to recycle plastic in this way would would address that in in many ways, and so uh, uh, so I could see that being appealing to people. You know, making it much a much more sustainable kind of uh, uh, technology. Yeah, and then there's rubber and high performance things like glazing for a low cost greenhouse. If you talk about agriculture, things like that yeah. that make it very attractive. Yeah, even things like glaze you know talk about 3d print entire modules that have windows in them and stuff like that uh and the plumbing and stuff in them already that's a possibility with the 3d printing for us uh, and the recycling part is definitely um yeah it exists now but then you got cbs maybe the 3d printing with rammed earth or other things that are uh, also better like but the thing is there's all this plastic in, in the economy so that's a good thing to use that detritus um, to a good use. Put it to a good use. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so, any thoughts? Any more thoughts on on that? Um, hmm. Well, I mean, he did mention the uh, uh, videos. The, just the amount of content being yeah. overwhelming. I feel like remote people can't hear. Nobody can hear. Let me try unmuting mine. But if your speakers are on, I don't know. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> See, that's why. <laughs> Is that you or me? That as soon as I unmute. Well, I, I muted myself here, so let's see if that helped. Okay. Um. So now I. Okay. Yeah. I guess I hope they can hear me now. But anyway, um, the amount of content can be overwhelming. So I think uh, if we can come up with step-by-step uh, -step instructions, yeah, um, that would be really helpful. It would just lower the barrier to entry. Um, yes. Again, increase the conversion rate. Yeah. I think the slides are good, but um, something. Just a little bit more fleshed out, a little bit more detailed would probably be better. Maybe like a, a nice, a really nice PDF with the open source ecology cover on it. You know, like some. Well, of the are you talking about? Are you talking about? Like a like a. Which nice, are you talking about? Posting for this training for this event or um, specify what you're talking just, about? Just in general, to for the specific target of people. Like if you're if you're an owner builder, you probably want that. And then you can have access to the build features as well, but then having a full, nice, branded uh, document PDF would, would be the support that you would need, in addition to being of course. able to reach out to us. Those are all the steps up front. I mean, that's, that's getting into enterprise and products. Like, we're in development, so products would naturally be things like manuals and all of that. I mean, that's all included. That's We're not there yet. I mean, we're... Like, what you're pointing out is, yes, these are all the things that need to come in. This all needs to happen. Yeah. Uh, we can work on some of that. We're, right now, here. we're just focusing on specifically the, the ego problem. Well, there's techniques, there's process, and there's substance. So the substance is the eco home right now, but the process is the same. It's collaborative development and CAD and... Uh, how do you do that with a group? How do you fund it? How do you all the processes that support that? So there's different levels of 
what we document. The thing that's common, whatever we choose, like if it's a 3D printer or not, what I was trying to say before is that what's relevant right now is that there's techniques in, oh. Yeah. What I'm saying right now is what's, <laughs> what's relevant is all the techniques that we develop to get there, including the incentive challenge as a technique. If we develop this technique, then maybe we actually, this is a thing we run every year. This is part of our programs. For a particular product. Yeah. Or, you know, for anything. So we do this thing now, the 3D printer. Um, the house we're kind of getting on top of, it's, a, it's more like through the, the collaboration architecture brain dump I showed you before. <laughs> stuff like that I think that we can show in real life quite a bit more for point technologies could be these incentive challenges maybe we do that next for I was thinking possibly annually but pretty soon solar hydrogen that kind of stuff you know so now let's do this thing if this succeeds go to more ambitious stuff like if we get the traction on getting a lot of people involved in solving this thing, actually building a product that, that's pretty good, then we have developed some technique. And then we can apply it to larger larger projects and more ambitious goals like solving energy next, which is a much, I think, a bigger issue than housing. Yeah. Because that's the under, underlies all of our economy. Housing is one aspect of uh, our livelihood. Energy is more huge, more fundamental. Um, but yeah, yeah. So techniques, there's te development techniques that we're developing which apply to anything. And the very specific things. Here's the collaborative CAD workflow. You know, the positionally correct stuff. Like specifically speaking, uh, if we go to this uh, today's doc, the kind of breakdown I see. Okay, so there's onboarding materials. You gotta teach free CAD. Probably yeah, don't want to take note of like what what all needs to be in there, and then maybe uh yeah like if so like take the same thing like you can still do a PDF or a, or, or a bigger document, and then you could have like a, a video link appendix maybe, and then these should be videos that are super tight, and the onboarding is like no right but minimal just featuring all yeah. the different things that you want to have videos for. So like if yeah. you like your free CAD video that's really short, that would be one of the first things in the CAD section, but doesn't have to be directly in the CAD section you have an appendix for that you can go back to in the manual in the PDF and like the screwing things in on the house we have time lapse videos for that and like raw footage so that you can show some of that technique just for for product specific mm -hmm. as well so yeah I'm just like I'm just trying to see how it would be laid out and then maybe I'd come up with some kind of template or some type of example yeah, so yeah. CAD, uh, like right now it's CAD, it's onboarding. These are, we're talking about collaboration right now in general. So um, the. Yeah, I mean, for if we talk about large scale collaboration, that's like, so I pointed out to the main tools, but just one, I would call it collaborative li literacy, just the concepts. Like the concept of what's going on here. And then you go into the tools like FreeCAD, Wikis and Docs, and Collaborative CAD Protocol, which I broke down further into all this other stuff. But if we're collaborating with a bunch of people, we can't just say we're going to host this contest. We're going to, okay, let's get very specific procedures that people follow so we can build on each other. That needs refinement, right? I mean, ideally, you would have, uh, like, say we got to do the CAD whatever we got to do, people are versed in this collaborative CAD protocol and that thing just flies up there like before you say something, you know, or soon after you, you conceptualize something, it's like, okay, we've got the full CAD for it, let's build it and test it. So you want people you know? to be able to do like simple CAD, be onboarded, understand the cl collaborative literacy and mindset aspect, and yeah. understand the purpose or the goal of the challenge and have them start contributing actively within yeah. like a week like is that the time frame you're kind of is it a couple of days of seeing the materials of, of them just you know from beginning when they speak to you to when we when they actually come on and you hand them the 
documentation? I would say for them to start contributing is a minimum of four hours of collaboration technique. Like that would probably, that possibly might include the actual substance which they can look into. Okay, so now all the information we know about the printer. Here's all our ways we build things effectively. So they could build upon it. So that all needs to be digested, summarized, so that you can take a look at it quickly. I'm looking at like, in order for anyone to participate, you cannot have an extensive learning period. It has to be like maybe four hours for technique, four hours for the technology. Okay. I'm thinking. It's like, like eight if hours, you study it. Like a business day. Yeah, I mean, t to collaborate on this pretty big thing, I mean, you're going to have to value the idea that you're, you're learning how to collaborate. Uh, so that's part of the selection process for the people that join it. Um, so we're building culture. But it has to be a significant investment. Somebody has, has to say like, wow, okay, I want this. Well, first of all, the prize is supposed to do that. That's the theory about when you offer a prize, people are like, oh, yeah, 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 I'll, I'll go. You can kind of tell them what to do. Okay, you need to do this in order to participate. We, set, we get to set the rules because we, we hang a carrot in front of the world. Um, but we say for this particular carrot you need to do these very specific things because that's what we're given the reward for. The reward is specifically for collaborative design so the very specific processes that go along with that. So we're not just telling them to like, oh we're gonna get this technology. That's like, I would say that's the byproduct. The, the thing that we're trying to develop is a is a technique for mass collaboration that's going to be replicable. That's what I see. The, pro the product is exciting and that's part of it, but the real deal, just like I say about the, the Global Village Construction Set, I say we're not developing the, the specific 50 things, we're de devising a paradigm for how you collaborate and, and develop technology in general. It's a new paradigm of how you go about Earth's operating system transitioning from proprietary to collaborative so but you have to have some substance that you're working on otherwise it's like philosophy uh, we're saying uh, it's not philosophy it's an applied philosophy we're applying it to world change in these specific ways so the bigger outcome for me is I look at it as if we set up a new pattern that people say wow first of all we're collaborating which we've never done before on Hero X and People will probably argue what I just said. It's like, well, they're all collaborating. No, you're going to be disqualified if you collaborate with somebody else. In, in other words, take their materials. So it's not collaborative. So that in itself is a huge culture change right there. If we can show people that we should collaborate and it works to get a real product, that is changing the system. That's starting to shift culture. And that's, that's what I think the important part is here. It's not that we're going to develop that printer. <clears throat> because if we develop the technique, we can develop anything. And a printer is a good bait for something that's technologically ripe and kind of like, I think, a good strategic choice for what could happen out of this. And we also include the environmental angle with the solving the plastic thing. Yeah. So... The bigger goal is about, yeah, it's definitely about systems change, like showing a good example of collaborative development where um, I would say for I mean, the first time in history, getting a mass, massive amount of people to show up for authentic collaborative development on open products. Nobody's shown that. Like RepRap maybe is the closest perhaps or possibly us or whatever, uh, where um, you're getting people coordinated on you know, this whole development. But we haven't done it because, I mean, the biggest audiences we had were, were working together were 50 people. Can't call that mass collaborative design like Linux, which is, which actually, Linux has shown that in software. They've got like 2,000 people working right now full time on the kernel. That's, that's like, yeah, that's significant development. That's where we need to get to. So unless hardware gets to that level, open hardware, open hardware forever is going to remain marginal. So we're solving for the next step in open hardware. 
and I say that that is having people show up. That's what I think we're solving for. When I, when I kind of like philosophically speaking, what are we solving for here? I say we're solving for people showing up for open hardware development that succeeds in real products. That's that's what we're doing. So if those if that technique works, we can apply it to anything. So that's a much bigger prize. That's why I think if we can achieve that with a quarter million dollars, there'll be a major milestone. If this works, that's a historical milestone, I would say, by all means. Shifting the paradigm. It, it could have that. I mean, it would, at least it will get somewhere towards that. I mean, how well it gets to, to what I just said is, I mean, it's all up to us. It's how well we execute it. Um, that's all up to us. Yeah. I mean, the design part's one thing, and, and getting maybe the, like some elements of the 3D printer done, like printing different things and mm -hmm. small appliances, but then the next larger step really involves other people going out for themselves and being able to have the ability to have a micro factory, at least to, to, to do something on scale. Yeah. That's, that's the next. Well, the question is what, pro like, if this printer is really good and it's doing what we say, how accessible can we make it? in terms of price reduction to make it possible for many more people to have it. So if we get the price very nice and low, that could make make that step that you said much more easy. It's not huge capital barriers to get one of these things in every community. Yeah. Yeah, I mean and another, th I don't know if this has been kicked around, but maybe instead of like every every individual having something or trying something, um, like you have a just a large space in a city or a, or a particular place where, like like you can hold st steam camps, you can other people can go and work and print things out and just kind of share the infrastructure. Mm -hmm. It's going to be entrepreneurs who are doing it, or organizations, community spaces. Someone can take leadership because there's going to be a learning curve, and so this is can't just take somebody off the street unless they're super motivated to learn it and right. make it go. So it's going to be first first with capable people, um, but the thing is to make the user interface as good as possible and access barriers as low as possible as well. Mm-hmm. about it that way, um, I guess the really the most important thing is uh, the outreach, it's, the, it's getting to people and, you know, like I said uh, before, uh, increasing the conversion rate and... Um, Did you turn your mic on? Just making... Yeah, I'll turn it. <laughs> I guess I'll turn mine on. Yeah, well, thinking about it uh, that way, it would be really, um, yeah, the most important thing is the marketing and um, making this accessible to a, a big audience. And yeah, so I, I, I feel like maybe so that we're not carrying the cross ourselves, <laughs> that should be mm -hmm. the, <laughs> the yeah. focus is... Uh, simplifying things and uh, making it easy for uh, people to just pick this up as soon as they hear about OSE, pick up on the work that we're doing. The reason for going on uh, the the reason for going on Hero X is they have an audience already. So so once once we prepare, we have all the assets ready to go and to train people. Uh, I think a lot of that will come from Hero X because that's a well-watched platform. And of course, yeah, the marketing before, like the preparation before that, contacting all the people, like say the stakeholders involved, anyone who wants to solve the plastic issue or possibly housing issue, 
yeah, there's a lot of marketing in that process where you know, we're reaching out to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And making quality videos to introduce this so they get shared and stuff like that. And using, you know, like people we're going to contact are going to have their audiences. So ideal, ideally using the leverage of other thought leaders to who have their audiences. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would be really interested in uh, um, just, I, I'm very obsessed with the idea of, uh, what is it, of um, expanding the pie, um, making things more efficient. Um, so yeah, I would be really interested in just the, um, what is it? Looking at things from the perspective of, a, of somebody who's never uh, done any work with technology, no, never done any CAD or anything, and making the process for them to start contributing simple. That would be, that would be really interesting. It would be, and possibly we can structure it uh, I wasn't focusing on that, but yeah, that, that does bring up a good point because I'm thinking that we're catering to those who already have some technical skill to design it, but what if we structure it such that, well, there's many, many roles around this, mm -hmm. like from marketing or like copywriting or or like just documentation, all these other supporting roles behind this kind of development that people with all kinds of skill sets can do, or it's your opportunity to learn those skills so we're selling it as learn to do this and by the way you can also contribute here because we've got these design guides and so forth so you're introducing people who would never think that they could do this um, yeah. that would require like really high quality so the focus there is very good onboarding materials right. like really clear uh, clear stuff it's mastery of the pedagogy around communicating what we have here so a lot of assets like videos or uh, animations or diagrams like all this all this standard documentation stuff that's just really well done and can get people on the other part is this thing would be trivial if we see the part libraries and say the FreeCAD designer where, yeah, you're designing it from readily accessible parts. I think that's almost like a prerequisite if, if we're going to do what you said is get anybody. I mean, I think anybody could do it if we give them the design tool to do it, yeah. right? Yeah. So, um, so it's like a circular question here. Like if we had the design tool, you know, we're probably, we would probably already have that printer too. So it's like we got to do all these things at the same time. Yeah. Uh, but that's where it's that's a perfect call out for the global collaboration for many people to contribute to that and so we can do is uh, we can definitely provide a shopping list of all the things that need to be done like I did with my other diagram there like and I actually make it readable and understandable and stuff like that um, and if we have a lot of eyeballs looking at it a lot of the stuff may be done may get done and it depends how much work we put into into preparing people to contribute. That, so that's like that's the big part. Otherwise, we're relying on people in the know and providing just the basics. Okay. Th so the way I was looking at it is, we've got the basics of how you collaborate on CAD, like which is hugely valuable for people who are already somewhat technical. Uh, I think a lot of people would be excited. Okay, learn how to collaborate with 
a boatload of people across the world in real time, yeah. rapid collaboration. Right. So that audience, I think that works. Now to get to, you know, to get to the more novice levels, that's much harder. You just need way more preparation or more time than we have right now. Uh, so you, we require at least some level of technical literacy. So someone who's technically literate, but now gets the collaborative liter literacy on top of that, effectively. Mm -hmm. That's how I would look at it. Um, which is a huge value proposition for somebody who maybe is just working in a cubicle and for a proprietary company, they might say, I mean, I, I wish I really could collaborate with the whole world. And I bet you there's a lot of people like that. Yeah. Um, sure there are because it's a missing thing yeah exactly um let's see let me turn on my mic uh, i think one piece that more ahead. more is and you you all are probably doing this there for those who are in person but uh, i would like the opportunity to, to kind of um like break out into smaller teams and work with people kind of live or remotely more. Uh, and I, I think that we could leverage, you know, it's, it's not just having a bunch of people working on something at the same time, but also some of those people working kind of interdependently and kind of uh, in, in, a, in a relatively live um, to do stuff together that they might not be able to do as effectively or efficiently alone. Mm -hmm. part of the I'd like to see us do that better. Yeah, yeah. So pairing up. I can't people. hear you. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So pairing up with people. Um, definitely, we'd have to design that into exactly how we do that in our collaboration architecture, how we do things. Yeah, but absolutely, that's consistent with the the, the Scrum technique of pairing up of agile development. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, ideally, you've got just a load of Kind of somewhat self-organizing teams that know how to coordinate and uh, one way to coordinate is around te technological development you, then you've got a lot of different areas well there's different areas there's technology there's whatever marketing or communications this or that those are all teams that need to form up and that requires bodies you don't have enough bodies to to show that in the full full effect so it needs bodies and also the um, the techniques to do that, which we're trying to work on at the same time. So once, since we haven't had large numbers, we can only speculate of what it looks like in practice, but we're still trying to pave the way for that to happen. Like we're trying to pave the way for that to happen with the CAD. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, so um, thinking about things in from the perspective of production, um, I think one of the issues is that there's a lot of choke points, a lot of bottlenecks um, on our production process um, because somebody, even if they have technical skills, well, uh, if they want to get involved, they're going to use they're going to need to use FreeCAD. They might have only used AutoCAD or proprietary software before. So it's learning a new software. And um, there's all kinds of problems with using the latest version of FreeCAD with what we're using, because we're using FreeCAD 15. So there's another uh, thing that they need to um, download, and it's not as convenient. Um, there's there's uh, all the documentation to learn. There's um, yeah, I mean, we, we have to, uh, just work on the bottlenecks and things would move faster, uh, more people would come over and contribute. Yeah. said <laughs> everything.
everything that <laughs> I could say. <laughs> I don't know what else. If anybody else has ideas. Uh, I guess from a higher level, this is kind no. of weird. Can you unmute? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I guess from a higher level, this is kind of where the, the project management aspect comes into play. Like right now we have we have the eco home from you know, a bigger picture. We have the hero X coming up from a bigger picture, the summer X coming up. Um, there's just a lot of things going on and a lot of parts to those individual projects in and of themselves. And then there's the continuous things that need to go on, the marketing, the um, you know, the, the spreading awareness of, of the movement and, and that sort of thing. So, would that be something to focus on as well? Or would, would it help to focus on getting that, getting something, some solution up for that? Or do you think what we have is sufficient hmm. anyway? Hmm. I think the biggest biggest thing is collaborative development protocols and then project management built on top of that. I think there's project management techniques, but the techniques for actual collaborative design, that's what I think needs needs to happen. Yeah. As far as... Uh, but then you, there's so many things to work on. Like, it, like obviously, it's it's important that people understand how to collaborate. I think that's, that's I agree with you. That's number one, like having that out in front, but then... How do we even focus on what we're working on at one particular point or another? With, like, right now we're focusing on Hero X, we're focusing on Eco Home, focus on marketing. There's just a lot of moving parts here, and there's only you know eight, seven, eight people. Mm -hmm. And then once that's more clearly defined, then um, it may be easier for people to come in and contribute because they're like, oh, well, this is something I can definitely do you know, if, if it's something that's publicly visible. Um, actually, let me get on here. So uh, that gives me an idea. Maybe there's been somebody who's come to um, uh, one of the OSC workshops, maybe somebody who's... Um, uh, helped out before or um, just has experience like somebody who has experience with that kind of thing um, I don't know uh, I feel like it should be there should be uh, somebody dedicated to that um, a I mean a project manager uh, somebody to yeah it sounds like <laughs> somebody, <laughs> somebody to take care of a lot of the the, the, the grunt work because um, that might, I mean, that might be the solution. Um, because I've, I, I wouldn't say that uh, it's all that. What is it? How, how should I say it? I mean, I'm sure that there's people out there who are dealing with. Um, tough schedules and um, a lot of moving parts, but they're working at places that uh, they're not passionate about what the company or organization is doing, and they would want to come here and do the same work just because it's more impactful. Um, so maybe that's something to entertain. Well, of course, but, but yeah. Getting the word out of, um, <laughs> yeah, that's an issue. That's an issue, of course. But I mean, we're, we're working on like, all we organic do? marketing, like just word of mouth, posting the videos to YouTube. Um, you know, the videos do well on on Instagram, I feel, just because random people can come across it, and it's it's something that will come up like that. You know, you have the little OSC link in there. People will go click on it. That's when you can at least have awareness or get people interested. Yeah. 
Okay. Like, at least from what I've seen, I've, I've been doing that myself recently, and it's not a whole lot. Maybe, uh, you know, 50, 60 views on each video now that have been up for a, little, for a, little, for a few days, but it's definitely something. You know, at le and at least to, not to just say Instagram, but just to have a clear platform that we're targeting as far as the marketing and how we target that platform. Well, the Herox is supposed to answer that question, though. We have massive exposure. You might have to run campaigns for that, like advertising it. I mean, if you want to get the most for your uh, the most outreach, like if you have a Facebook group, mm -hmm. you run an ad campaign with the Herox challenge and you point to the Facebook group, you can target random people in a certain age bracket and then they can get funneled in. You know, you, you, that that's closed right there. Instagram, you, you post a video to get people interested. You post like a flyer. Um, yeah, I don't know if you have OS, have OSC on, on that platform, but you can see that do a small, maybe five minute video and do that. You know, knowing what platform and having a way to target that platform generally are the important things. So it sounds like you're talking about marketing strategy, so that's one of the things that needs to be developed and executed. Um, if we have one, we can allocate resources to it. The way I think about it right now is um, move forward on product development. Like, okay, so we are. We're building the house. That, to me, is the single most important thing. Then you can take a photo shoot and say, okay, we're actually going to be ready to take orders pretty soon and stuff like that. That's that's the biggest thing. So. Um, it's kind of a conflict for me. Uh, let me maybe unmute. It's <coughs> somewhat of a conflict for me. Right now, I'm thinking, oh yeah, I should be spending time marketing. But I'm saying, nah, could do it. But most important thing right now is product. Uh -huh. The product yeah. is going to speak for itself. It's a conflict for me right now because I'm thinking, <laughs> shit, I gotta be. I want to spend a little bit of time. I'm, I'm like, nah, forget it. I'm not even going to post much or nothing, because. Uh, my time is already short on this. Like we need the CAD and all of that built in the workshop. That's that's the complete. To me, that's the complete bottleneck right now. Yeah. We're way like way delayed on that. I mean, for various reasons, like that takes longer and stuff. It takes, takes longer to develop than you think. Uh, Have you? Ever and I was hoping that by the time we were at the apprenticeship, like definitely be done, but still haven't <laughs> yeah. finished the house, right? Um, so, have you ever had somebody managing social media and marketing? Um, no. no, we don't have any money. Yeah, we're all on steel. Oh, okay. That was <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's either steel or a marketing person to market what? Right. <laughs> so, you know, that's the, that's the best summary of the logic there. Yeah. <laughs> so, to spend money um, and do things, you actually have to have money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who would have thought? <laughs> I mean, I, I joke about this a lot of times, but first is a lot of open source projects forget that they have to have this one critical element called the product. And then even when you actually are a business, you have to remember that a business has to get more money in than it spends. <laughs> right. Which uh <laughs> which actually is it's it's a joke, but it's so serious because a lot of companies they can do that, and then at some point they can't do it anymore. You know, so it's it's a hard thing. Mm -hmm. It's an obvious thing, but um, yeah, I'm just kind of joking here. Um, yeah, I think the the marketing right now is the the house product that it speaks for itself. I think that plus just a little photo shoot and some assets around that. Without that, we can I cannot tell person specifically. I can offer you this. I cannot define the product. Don't have enough information mm -hmm. until we build it. Go back through all the spreadsheets on costs and uh, have the experience of actually yeah. And through the build, we're collecting more data on the times and everything else and usability and like how it actually turns out. Until that, we don't have. We cannot go live with it. 
um, in terms of active uh, active uh, solicitation of interest because it wouldn't do us people are like oh yeah you're talking about it but where is it and it's like it doesn't serve a purpose right now we have the last one that's great but you know it's been there for some time but you can market for the hero works challenge mm -hmm. I mean that that's definitely something yeah. you want to do and you can probably exceed your goals if the marketing is done well it's just the the hype needs to be built around people coming out like you know taking some you know quote unquote ordinary person and <coughs> helping to develop their potential so they can contribute to more of the, the technology or or fill a role within OSC with themselves you know just doing something like like people development is I, 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 that's the easiest way for me to say it I guess is one of the things I, I like to think about as well, like, of you know, some person may have not had the formal education or the opportunities, but you take them of course. And, and they have the real world experience doing something and then they don't just fill the role. Right. So the only other insight on that is, is uh, the best way that's happening, unless they're a volunteer, which means they're non-committed and will disappear at some point, you got to hire them and for that it's a business. That's kind of like the summary of that, that whole discussion because we've been at it for a long time. We had many people go through. Mm -hmm. um, that's why the clarity right now is where you can stick around is when you're making a living out of this. That's a pretty obvious thing. So yeah. I'll, I'll, note, I'll <coughs> note that part down because that's, 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 that's the key. Yeah. Uh, how, can the, you, how can you provide value to someone who comes in and the, the money may not, like... You can't, you just, uh, you're just like a volunteer project, which, you know, it's, it's, it's super hard. Like, I just say, no, nah, you can't, you gotta, uh, they're gonna disappear at one point. It's still a simple idea that they gotta pay their bills for something and they gotta go to somebody else to pay their bills. Mm -hmm. and once we're paying their bills, they go away. It's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's simple like that. The 3D printer, the incentive challenge is a lot about marketing and product development that gets us to to irresistible offers. We're working on an irresistible offer, something that's extremely attractive to a lot of people. I think the printer is totally in that. Um, without the printer, if we don't have any energy for that, we can we got to focus on the house um, and then get back to that later. I think there's there's enough energy. Like I think it's so synergistic towards the house because. Once that's launched, by that time, like say we launched it in December, and I was thinking like we got to launch this when we can actually manage it, because otherwise wild contributions without good guidance, without somebody managing it, and that's probably me or somebody else that really knows the tech, because it's a lot of it is going to be tech development. So unless somebody really picks up on all the tech, I'll be the most qualified person to evaluate, like okay, is this going in the right direction? Can I see it? happening and getting the price point and performance ratios and all that. Uh, it's synergistic and then once around that time we'll have the CD home, Eco Home pretty much as in taking customers for that, taking orders, so the Hero X, that would be great marketing. People are saying, oh wow, these people are developing this printer, they all have, also have this house that this printer is relevant for and stuff like that. So I think it's synergistic. And just the idea of, of uh, proving out the concept of people showing up, that part, that, that I think is a, is a good deal. Uh, people showing up, but they have to show up to a point where it's, yeah, enough of the product gets developed that they can actually stick around because of the things that we're doing. Yeah. And it's, you know, the printer I think is close to that. Uh, we're all close on all these fronts. It's, it's really cool. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's like the last mile problem here. Mm -hmm. Can I ask a quick question? Yeah. Um, how what would they need to uh, to be developing? Like, uh, like what would they need to have uh, 3D printers themselves so they could be prototyping some of this stuff? Or I'm just wondering about any like technological barriers to entry there in terms of equipment they would need 
a lot of it you can do do on design of course the final step is somebody's got to be building these things people can feed off the prototypes we're going to build here and they could continue the design from there but uh, whoever's got resources to actually prototype that then that's that's going to be needed at the end some a bunch of people have to be at that level so there is a in that sense there is a significant barrier to entry unless you have access to that of course because uh, you can prototype without some equipment with you and uh, but, but a lot of it is, is the design work on the like for somebody who's a really good designer if there's a really good designer but doesn't have the capacity to build they can still design a lot uh, right. but if they're just a designer and don't have a capacity to build that's that's a questionable combination because um, typically designers that don't build a lot of things are not going to be that good so typically it's like ideally it's a designer person who designs and builds but it's broken down enough so that that a lot of the due diligence of getting the final design is just simple CAD work like we got to go through the due diligence of that accurate model because that's what we're going to build so uh, the price has to be around something that's well documented and as built documented uh, otherwise nobody can replicate it so we gotta have that match of the complete model to the reality um, we would probably stipulate that that's the requirement like if you just build it well that's nice but if you don't show how it's built and nobody can replicate it I mean no it's all about documentation and replication that has to be there for and however we we scored if, if the price is divided between many people there might be you know contributions that but but the altogether it has to be there the full package has to be there altogether yeah, and the other question there is, well, how do, we, how do we guide, how do we actually evaluate the entries? But it's going to be some kind of a, it has to be based on division of labor. Like, one person cannot do all of this, I don't think. And that's the whole reason for the, the incentive challenge. So structure that it's big enough that a single person can't do it. Or it's very hard for a single person to do it all. Uh, devise it design it for collaborations so that's learning it's like how do you how do you really make that happen with with a challenge like this I think there's gonna be uh, lots of learnings there of how that actually works mm -hmm. What is the issue that we're we're solving right now or discussing? <laughs> it would be <laughs> how do we get people to show up? Um, show up and stay. <laughs> yeah, show, show up and keep contributing. That's I think. So you uh, that is a general question, or with respect to the Hero X? Uh, well, I was thinking about it more generally. Um, Hero X, the, I mean, the, the money's there. It's an interesting product. Um, you know, people are doing something good. They're working with each other. I, I think that's, as long as it's marketed well, it can be solved. Like, that can probably take care of itself but more in general. Like, after Hero X, you see that there are talented individuals maybe that you can reach out to, but how, how can you, you know, approach them to make more contributions? If we have a product, we can build a business around it and hire people at that point. That, that, I think that issue solves itself, I'd say. I mean, the goal is to develop a product. Um, now, the business around it, um, right, because anything you, you develop as a product, you have to develop a business around it. But because the value proposition at that point is so significant, I think that's, that's like sales um, that beat the competition in a significant way. Yeah, I think that that part will solve itself. It seems like, in my view, no. Is that a bad assumption? Um, 
or or we actually use it for the houses and we reduce our cost on the houses which are which is our cost our um, core product so like if it's there that's that's like a big step that solves a lot of issues solves enterprise feasibility issues whether it's the printer itself or the the house enterprise because then we can you know lower lower the cost and that comes with a lot of attention I mean that, if that's achieved we're gonna get a lot of attention on that so I don't think the, uh, the, the in fact the goal of the incentive challenge it's, it's like it's that's your recruiting it's kind of a recruiting thing mm -hmm. that's a side effect of it by all means so many people are seeing it and seeing the tangible product coming out of it that's uh, that's big <coughs> How does that uh, compare with what you saw with uh, some of the other things that you came out with? Uh, like, did a, a lot of people, well, are there people right now building, uh, like, the CEB press? Um, and no, that's the point. It's uh, CEB press, like CEB press, if we have that, there's just not enough interest in that. Like, how many people know what that even is? Right. Okay. Here, I think it's applied to housing every single person knows what a house is so it's just a difference of the market size it's so Very just much market, bigger much, much bigger product the price versus, yeah, yeah. So. Okay. much bigger yeah like the press is that's good that's a that's in the pro product por portfolio uh, and yeah that, that can be developed into a business in itself into a decent business but um, yeah, this thing, what what we're after right now is just much much bigger market. I think that's that's the plain answer on that. I guess. Mm -hmm. okay. the, uh, the CV press or the idea of building a CV. I think a lot of people are not familiar with that or uh, would be averse to it, thinking that it's going to crumble in the rain. Yeah, yeah. There's. So uh, I think you, you need to actually build to be able to show people this is what you can Of like course. This. And um, I mean, one other thing that I'm thinking of, because in Indonesia, it's weird how everything is so small. <laughs> well, uh, you know, um, they everything is like when they sell something, it's all in like tiny little pieces. Mm. <laughs> so even your, uh, I'm just thinking of. Um, what was it the small day? fish. <laughs> yeah, small fish. Um, uh, uh, what was it? Um, it was something else. Uh, coffee, like coffee. You get it in a tiny little packet that you can go to the shop and buy just for one cup of coffee. Mm. Anyway, um, so the what I was actually thinking of in Indonesia is this thing they call um, they're like uh, they, they're a lot of. In this, in the cities where you have factories like in Bandung, you have a lot of textile factories, and so you have a lot of workers who migrate to come to the cities to work from their home villages, and they usually stay in the floor. One. Uh, can you room. can you turn on your voice, maybe? Uh, is that, is that, is that on? Okay. Oh yeah. Yeah, so yeah, they, 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 they come from the from um, villages into the cities and they live in these little one, two room apart, uh, no, apartments, like yeah. dormitories. So that's quite popular. So I was thinking of actually building that kind of thing mm -hmm. using CD, mm -hmm. using CD yeah, as a business. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, no, I mean, that's a great thing. Yeah. You're muted. Yeah. yeah.
so do you so uh, regarding today's uh, work so can we work on work on some of this or like are we what we wanted to do because uh, I wanted to work on uh, on getting the assets together for the incentive challenge so first is the technical due diligence uh, which is literally like you know taking a lot of the stuff we have and just uh, massaging it a little bit and preparing it for it so it's like not like we're starting from something from scratch we've got tons of work prior work now it's time to uh, go with it to run with it kind of deal um, so does anyone else want to do do any work on uh, assets generation for the the incentive challenge We're supposed. To, what are we doing here? We're supposed to be developing techniques for global collaboration. Okay. Well, the incentive challenge is a technique for global collaboration. So that's the idea here was that we work collaboratively on that. So one side is okay. Here's specific assets for the incentive challenge. Others is well. This is the first time we're doing such a thing, and we're learning a lot about it. We also have to generate the onboarding materials, which is completely relevant to the other things we're doing within the program. So just doing that teaches us a lot and up, upgrades our assets that are used throughout. So that's the idea. Um, that's, that was the intent of the, the Saturday session. So that's one action I have developed documentation for up onboarding and collaboration. Mm -hmm. What other assets? Like I know there's logos and things that people were working out. I don't know if that individuals here or if uh, if that's something. No, they're not. Still yeah, it's everything. So so taking a look at a rough draft. Like so from last, I think last week. Let's put a link to last week's doc, which was at day three. We started some of that already. Like Prince was looking at the structure and wrote, just writing an announcement. Um, day three. Where's the working dock down there? Mm -hmm. So last working dock. Start on a few things like what else we talked about. The ultimate thing that goes up online is is the announcement itself. So writing actually its its sections and stuff like that. Just starting to define the things that are needed and starting a page on that somewhere on a wiki or something or in a do another doc would be one thing that's the most th the thing that can get you focused the most we can we know that we have to put in our technical specs we need a description all that there's all the, all the writing that has to be done there that's uh, that's one thing um, but the idea is like what you know how can we divvy this up to to do that if you guys want to do that um, You guys think you can contribute to that, or want to want to do anything for it, or are you in a position to do something? I have a question. Um, mm -hmm. if or yeah. If they okay, if the challenge is not uh, the the problems that we're trying to solve aren't solved by the challenge. Then the money isn't given away, and you just yeah can, okay. It's not. I mean, all right. It has to be. And there's no, there's no like fees associated with Hero X where they're gonna take um, a percentage anyway. There is, I think. If it doesn't succeed, then they take their cut no matter what. I think ah. so, and that's gonna be like 
like 10%. Okay. So it's a thing that when we do it, we want to make sure we have the energy to support it and, and guide it in the proper way once it's online. And of course, to prepare for it, put something that's well done so it's not an unsolvable problem, right? Um, so like going through the technical due diligence, uh, if I do that, then okay, this is what I'm sure we can do this such and such. But we can say like maybe, I don't know how they do extensions, I don't know about those details, but if it's clear that it's not going to get done, I, I think there's some flexibility on various parts. Um, so we'd, we'd roll with the punches and we'd, we'd see what we need to do. But there's got to be, but that's a good thing too, it's like that means we're not really losing that money. We're, you know, we tried, probably by the time it ended, we got the 10% worth of value. Maybe we got 50% worth of value, so it's even maybe a great steal anyway. It's a great deal anyway for us, uh, if you think about it that way. It's not like we failed and like nothing was done. I think at least 10% is going to get done. It might might get to like, um, like we would probably say it's not done if it's like 50% done. We don't have it. It just doesn't work or or whatever. Um, so that's the care care we have to to take as far as how we design, okay, what is acceptable, right? So we, we define that, and that has to be very clear. So it's to be a success, success criteria. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so, okay, so for example, a video of you actually printing this object and it actually coming out good and all of that, like, with the whole process of actually you taking, you grinding trash, I mean, everything. That's why it's the big thing. It's a, it's got a lot of moving parts. Right. Mhm. Mm uh, another question. Yeah. Uh, this is going to be a global challenge. Isn't it? Yes. So I'm just thinking of uh, being able to reach out to people in Indonesia. Yeah. And yeah, absolutely. And then in it, like if we can't get 250k, that's at every step there's feedback. You know, if somebody says we're crazy because okay for this reason, no, I mean there's gonna be all these people that know what we don't know, and we weigh that. And if we go with that, we amend things. So it's a self-correcting process throughout. It's a complete creative learning process. Main thing about it, I think, is collaborating. That's what it's about. We're open in our how we approach it. Therefore, we have a unique opportunity to learn more than than anyone before. And we're seeking actively people who are willing to share their best knowledge and put put their best foot forward. And we're calling out people to be more open than before and stuff like that. So, um, I know there's. I'm no, I know we're gonna find much success in it. I think. Yeah, I mean, the things we're going to discover along that path, it's going to be amazing, I think. Like, maybe that is the thing that gets us many more collaborators, because it's a lot of that process is marketing. Marketing, reaching out to people that, um, starting with the people that we reach out for the funding, and then partnerships with people who who are interested in doing it. I mean, so the most interested people, that's who we'll reach out to. Maybe there's going to be, maybe like a call out for, like I'm thinking like 10 or 15, like 12, 12 or so people at 25K. Maybe there's a bunch of smaller ones or something. I don't know. Maybe we could even, <clears throat> but I think in terms of executability, like we, we probably have to go to like a, like a dozen or so larger ones because that's kind of manageable. Otherwise, it's like a whole fun fund crowd crowd fundraising project which we'd rather get people who are highly aligned uh, at the higher level already with uh, proposing a big big goal I think that's executable uh, along the lines of 10x is easier than 2x I think that that kind of logic yeah. applies um, so uh, have you thought through some of the logistics of how you encourage uh, like how do people work collaboratively and we teach across us teams and yeah like still um, 
get their what they feel like is their share of the prize. Um, it's exactly what we're doing right now. Who uploads their their files? Exactly. Who learns faster? Who learns? We're all, but we're helping each other. So also like things like there's communication platforms. Who's actually providing feedback? I thought a little bit about it. It's in, uh, in the copious notes from before. But for example, if you've got a there's a feed on Hero X itself, a communication feed. We'll have our forum. Absolutely the feed on the X itself, maybe there's a Discord or whatever, but it's like, we have to track all of that. Like on Wiki, yeah, we can track that, perhaps embeddable comments from Discourse, this form software within Wiki, we can count that stuff up. Like we can count contributions, the amount of time, we look at people's logs, how much you log on a Wiki. It's gonna be you're logging this stuff on a Wiki so everybody can see it. How are you gonna communicate? Where do you put all that info? All those techniques are gonna to have to be in there. It's basically a throwdown of all we know about collaboration and teaching masses of people to do it because they're incentivized by, by the reward and a big, big goal. So that's, that's what it would take. We have to make it quantifiable. And then at the end of the day, it's going to be like, and well, that stuff includes things like people's videos, like they're actually building stuff. Or I think CAD is at the first level before we get to the final design. It's going to be the CAD collaboration. It's going to be a lot of that for a bunch of time until we say, okay, this is this is what we build and it may be that we have gates as in like okay we we talk about it we discuss it and then we say yeah this is the best let's move with this and we and we're not trying to compete we're trying to say this is a goal bigger than all of us and we're working together so a completely new culture and an unprecedented paradigm of what's happening that's that's what's going to go on and we just have to codify it and grade it along those lines but immediately we can point to a few things like there's wiki you can automatically now see how many edits people have and all that. You can probably count up, get the record of how, how many words people uh, put up there. That's quantitative. But then again, you, at the end of the day, for the people that are, have the good metrics, you look into more into their work, what they've done, and have they collaborated. Because everywhere you got to leave a paper trail so that everyone else knows what you're doing. That's the whole thing. So... Um, we have to specify, you know, just get a little more specific on what all what all that means. But that's kind of the basics of how how to collaborate. But it's uh, people are going to have to learn. So we have to teach people most effectively, like what is this most basic process, which allows anyone else to see what you're doing, anyone else to download and use what you're doing, and that's degenerate. It's like open source software, wikis, docs, videos. It's like it boils down to the same thing. It's like you got to have an open set of data that you data trail that you're leaving behind you that can be counted. You know, so we basically have to count it up at the end of the day, tally it up. You can start with, and people have time logs. We can use the time logs on the wiki, and then wiki contributions. That would be like perhaps the first two things you can look at. Like this person spent thousands of hours on this challenge. Oh, maybe let's look at what they did. And of course, they'll be active in a community and stuff like that, and you can track all of that kind of stuff. Um, even things like already automated things like reputation on fo on a forum, where as people, the more they post on a forum, the higher reputation they get. It's somewhat of a self self managing system with discourse. So there's ways there's ways to to track things, and we we might want to establish some. You know, if we find some missing bad gap, then we'd probably uh, fill it if we need it. But I think just simple commits, which are edits and uploads, that's kind of what we start by counting. And uh, at the end of the day, it has to be a working machine. Someone actually saying, hey, look at this piece of lumber I printed. And that's success. And that has to be transparent. Like that would, To me, that would mean a simple video that they took of the whole process. That would be your entry, perhaps, or you you might even sh maybe for the people that are in the running, they have to ship the machine to us or we visit it or something or somehow otherwise verify it. So is there going to be you're not going to put a limit on how many people can enter because no way there's uh, I mean, that's a lot of review for <laughs> automate it. You can't you can't I mean, you right. can't do it by hand. You got to automate that. So you got to put that infrastructure. A lot of it is automated already. Start with the number of hours. 
they log and the amount of commits they do. That's that's already there. All you need to do is look at the wiki history. You look at the wiki history, the number one contributor there is probably one you'd have to look more into all their logs to see who, you know, so maybe we select like a grand winner and maybe like 10, 20, or 30 smaller prizes, something like that. I mean, we have to decide all of that, but um, mm. you can get sophisticated at it or you can use very simple tools to do that. At the end of the day, it's going to be I would argue that clear that documentation that somebody's done it. I would argue that for simplicity's sake, you um, give a certain amount of money at every milestone. The first person to reach that, you get that amount of money. And then, uh, uh, yeah, you just have a bunch of milestones, and you're giving away prize money um, for the first person who gets it. And uh, they have to share it, and you eliminate mm -hmm. the need to review every mm -hmm. <laughs> everything that people are, are putting in. Because, uh, I mean, it's... Uh, I think yeah, but they're communicating. It's like you know, like like on a Facebook or whatever social media or discussions. It's going to be transparent who's winning because they're talking the most and they're the most engaged. So that to me, it seems like it comes out automatically, doesn't it? Um, I don't think so. Um, so I mean, I I can talk a lot. Uh, I yeah, might. but you have to substantiate. <laughs> well, Show the me the CAD file, what's man. The that's, though, right? that's, no, that's no, no, it's simple. That's what, that's what he's trying to say. Like, where's the where is the, the artifact from the work? Quote is that a serious that's question? No, but it's, it's funny, but that's that's the reality of it. Like people can write a lot of things on, on the wiki, but I guess it's like all how do you actually Yeah, I don't I don't wanna I don't think get about it. the value of I, I don't want a situation where um, uh, I mean somebody's writing a bunch of nonsense okay okay I don't get it I don't get what you guys are talking about all I need to do is download their file okay. and see what it says what it, what's it doing so I, I can tell you that immediately whether it's trash or it's a lot of work yeah, I mean I'm, someone's keeping on top of it yeah it'd probably be me because I understand the system and I'll tell you immediately what, what value they produced I, I feel like uh, <laughs> well if there's if there's what is it, ten thousand people um, yeah. competing for this, and you you're downloading all these files. Yeah, I mean, I'm it's just not going to be all these files. Where's the collaboration? They're all <laughs> contributing to various files, and they get certain forks go way forward. And and to me, it's like that's trackable. That's You'll see. Fine to look at just the, the amount of comments or updates from text that I mean you're still factoring that in at some point in the formula right like you get let, like you just have a large formula so let's say you have the number of commits as far as text the number of files uploaded uh, discourse rep um, number of logins to the wiki like you summarize all of that and that you come up with some composite score of, of that um, yeah I mean but, that's a start that's a start. You can actually. That's a start for seeing who who it is. Someone's gonna be on top of following all the discussion, right? Like there needs to be a manager who's following the discussion, and the transparency aspect of it is, like you can see where progress is being made and people are talking and it's all open collaboration. It's not that all these people, like thousands of people, working behind closed doors and all of a sudden you've got a flood that you can't unbury yourself from. No, at every single step things rise to the top, like a reputation system, like um, like upvoting, for example, too. That could be an automated automated system for evaluating things. Discourse has automated ways for evaluating people's credit and stuff like that right so you take these as, these as indicators and then you might say well okay I saw the last discussion and it was like cool like I'll I mean if I'm looking at this I'll be able to say like bam this is right on what I see happening is uh, someone's got to guide the process and we, we come to consensus that these are good paths it's gonna be degenerate because the problem is well defined it's not like people are gonna go through all these crazy disparate solutions it's either going there or it's not and you'll see that because we're transparent the rules are you have to communicate openly what you're doing 
so it's being published and the manager has to pretty much say this is on track or it's not on track so there that kind of role has to be there but that means that anyone and it might be quite a bit but a lot of the discussion can go on it's like i mean if i'd be managing this like i don't have to listen to every discussion it's going to kind of come out it would pretty much come out to the top because everyone's trying to collaborate. I don't know. I don't. I don't see that as a, as a huge issue. I mean, definitely you need serious oversight on the direction. I think there's a person that's needed that says yes, this is going in the right direction versus not, based on quantifiable metrics. Like somebody starting to do, uh, like for example, um, silly example, someone. Okay, CAD. Free CAD. Files in free CAD. Bam, I'll tell you the price of the thing. And I'm going to say, well, you're not meeting our price point based on this design. There's all kinds of things you can do, all kinds of uh, analysis. And for somebody who's a good student of that, they'll be able to, to tell you those kinds of things. And then if that person is. Uh, kind of corrected, like they should be listening to the best way forward. I, I think that um, unless there's like absolute collusion, like absolute, there's, um, what would you call it? People who are just bad agents in this entire game. So it's a, unless everyone's cheating, which means that they're just trying to fake the results, then the issue that you're running into is gonna happen. I'm not assuming that, but if it does happen, then and you're, unfortunately, they still have to produce a winning transparent product. Right. Uh, Whoever um, gets a winning transparent product, it's as simple as a as a we can say it's a one minute video that shows a time lapse of the entire of your entire thing. Uh, and then if they they have a compelling entry, we can say okay, give us more, tell me more. Uh, so it could be you know we can verify things, you can streamline the the judging process or automated try to automate it as much as possible someone's gonna of course have to evaluate it all there would be a probably a an evaluation team that we get together but it's like a technical review team like I don't know um, what's an example what's another example of something comparable to this in real life where there's a like say tons of contributions well like what happens during any hero X challenge where there's maybe a bunch of submissions well those probably there's not judges. going to be those are you know human judges but what i think josh and Odundo are getting to any is, is that any purely automated system can be gained. i'm not talking about purely automated that's just that's just one level i mean we're going to have a judging panel sure well, i think that that was the main concern is uh, collusion or okay. gaming the system or rings of likes of course in cryptocurrencies there's uh, uh the dream is a distributed autonomous organization so it's just uh, automated system that humans and robots can contribute to trustlessly. And that is uh, partly automated and partly there are human moderators, so there's moderation algorithms, and there are people who, um, well, there are organizations that award every week, like uh, they issue a certain amount of token and they award it based on participation on discourse and other automated measures. Um, those are purely automated, and you know, there are people who like, they just like everything or they comment on everything, so they don't really contribute a lot, but I think over time they get like, tired of doing that, um, and it almost is never a problem. I mean, sure, there's like some fringe of people who are not really contrib contributing, but overall, I haven't seen it be like a huge problem. Yeah, I mean, you guys are, are you trying to bring up the idea that, that how do you evaluate this whole thing's going to be intractable? Uh, that's what I was hearing you say, so I responded, and one, you can automate a bunch of stuff, but that's just one element. Yeah, um... I mean, I, I want to... It's just an indicator of, of all the data. I want to simplify forward. the logistics of uh, the competition because um, I Milestones feel, would probably be good. Yeah, yeah, yeah because I, I don't want... Uh, I, I'm seeing a situation where a lot of different things are, are uh, <laughs> being taken on at once um, because uh, working collaboratively... Um, on a project where people across the world with different teams, mm -hmm. individuals uh, are working on a, a hardware project, 
I mean, that's that's not something that uh, has really been solved um, at, on a large scale like you're talking about. And mm -hmm. so if you're trying to do that while doing the competition, I mean, I just feel like it's a lot to take on at once. For a while, no. The competition is what gets the people to show up. Yeah, it, it gets yeah. them to show up uh, and start contributing to these yeah. open source hardware projects. Yeah. Um, to advance the technology, mm -hmm. um, that's uh, that's the goal of the the challenge. Yeah. But if you uh, make the logistics, um, I, I mean, I feel like th this would make the logistics very um, very difficult, very cumbersome, um, because I, I just don't see. Uh, uh, I don't see how it doesn't become a situation where you're reviewing <laughs> a ton of stuff and uh, yeah, it, it just, there is also the potential um, for, hmm. for um, people to, I, I mean, I, I would be curious actually how the screening process would be on Hero X. Maybe that deals with some of the concerns around people trying to game it, um, who knows, but I mean, you have to design the, the rules to be that they're difficult to game. Right. Yeah. I mean, I, I just feel like milestones are the simplest way to do it. Okay, so let's talk about milestones. Because one thing that I see immediately about milestones is that um, you're limiting effort because you can only do one thing at a time. If yeah. you have a global population, that means you can't say everybody participate. So that to me would limit us on uh, what we're talking about collaborative design, it seems to me, like large scale, like scaling it. Yes, there's a problem of, oh yeah, there's more, so it might be harder to manage, but are we solving for people showing up? Because less people are showing up for that at a time. What if you were to allow by the parallel breakdown, which, is, which this project can, can be broken into parallel pieces that work together um, what if more people, I mean, the way I, I analyze it simply is more people would be working on it at any time yeah. because it absorbs everybody at all times. So to me, it seems like milestones significantly reduce the number of participants. And, um, the whole issue is that you get to this crazy unlimited like just really pushing the boundaries of collaboration um, I mean I, I don't have data to show any of this but that's, that's kind of how I'm analyzing this right now we don't have I don't know if we have knowledge one way or the other is there examples like for example if milestones are placed is that because you see that on other challenges you've seen milestones or um. I, I don't know if I have. Uh, I just feel like when it when it comes to trying to put together something collaborative and finding the simplest logistics, that's what yeah. I, I mean, that's what I. It sounds nice, but it just <coughs> doesn't get you all the people collaborating. So it seems like it's violating our first principle, which is collaboration. But, uh, well, you guys don't think that? Do the have to be? Uh, sorry about that. What? What? Uh, I was mm -hmm. saying, do, uh, do, uh, I was saying, do milestones have to be linear? Because you're saying that. Oh, I see. Linear milestones yeah. versus nonlinear milestones. Yeah. 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 Just, yeah. Mm. yeah. yeah I'm in favor of nonlinear milestones. Yeah. You could break up the project into. Um, yeah. Whoever gets. Uh, whichever into whichever. different pieces, right. basically. Um, I mean. Well, parallel means it's already nonlinear. Right. That's why the concept of milestones violates the concept of modularity because okay. it's all, all is in parallel. It should be the idea is that you can develop an unlimited amount of parallel things as long as you define the interface. We can define the interface. Therefore, you can work on everything at the same time. I think that's the logic there. And then milestones of like the level of completion, like prototype one, I mean, I guess it would make sense to say, like, prototype one, 
near product release, product release, I don't know, something like that makes sense where it's, you're still working on the whole thing at the same time. Um, I'd say it's also along the style that the two pizza teams from Amazon thing where they say, okay, they're working back from this as we defined as the goal. Mm -hmm. They're all doing that. So they kind of got to be looking at the whole thing at all times. Yeah. Is there a way to organize it in a way that um, somebody can, uh, <laughs> I mean, somebody can work on the project with, uh, you know, looking at, um, I'll design this part and uh, different people are collaborating to design a, a certain part and um, teams yeah yeah I mean it's self-organizing teams in, instead of uh, <clears throat> yeah instead of milestones as in um, reaching a final product people can um, work on all kinds of parts um, and I guess as somebody who knows the uh, physical limitations of uh, a certain technology and certain materials, maybe you can basically just break it down into pieces and. Um, but what pieces? I mean, there's modules. There's right. modules of the, the actual technology. Right. Um, yeah, that would be. Th that's where we start. Yeah. Start with the modular breakdown. And then, yeah, a, a prize for this, a prize for that. Um, it doesn't incentivize completion because it breaks, doesn't it? What's the incentive in that? You can r reward, make all these awards for these parts. How are you incentivizing that the whole gets put together? I mean, the biggest um, prize could be for the whole, the whole. and they're incentivized to collaborate. Like, let's say that you solve the seated chamber, but you haven't solved like the plastic shredding that some other team has. Like, you're all yeah. use their solution. So. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, so you still yeah, my, yeah. Smaller prizes for the components. Um, but if you're logistics probably would want to be it would make sense to do the logistics that you've got I don't know like the whole thing okay we got to like the first prototype that's like that makes sense because if you're gonna say oh heated chamber now other thing is that before or at the same time as the judging of the final thing I mean necessarily I think well that's a good question the people who are able to progress the fastest to the final project will use like modules that exist instead of trying to reinvent the wheel. I mean, there could just be a final contest um, deadline, and then people could just like stop innovating. Like, let's say there'd be good enough heated chamber. Most people who don't care so much about it or don't have ideas for improving it just stop working on it. Let's say, oh, it's a solved module. I'm going to move on to something else. I think yeah, that point would come on. That should come out clearly from the the requirements doc it's got such a requirement like for example it has to reach 200 C and have this kind of gradient from bottom to top or whatever whatever we specify like once you get it yeah you know you're done so that should be clear I would be careful about setting particular deadlines for a particular piece because everyone's gonna need all the time that they they can I think yeah I'm because worse. you can because that will allow you to improve it and then more teams are still working on it more and more. They're working more on it throughout. So I think you've got to set it at, it's the winner wins. It's like you reach the spec, that's it even. Like, and it might be, um, it might be there's a, I don't know about this. We'd have to ask the team from Hero X, but it might be that we say it's a flexible deadline. When we get to the finish line, we're at the finish line. And I don't know how that means, what that means for, but there's a cutoff. Like, okay, you got maybe eight months or six months. That's the cutoff. But if you reach it beforehand, you're fine. Um, yeah, that works for me. I mean, yeah, individual module deadlines make less sense to me. And also, someone could come up with a completely novel solution that doesn't use any of our modules. Yeah. They could say, like, oh, we actually got rid of the need for a heated chamber, and this is how we did it. 
that we don't want to say like, well, the rules say that that is disqualified. So we can say like uh, the modules are. We can make suggestions. We can. I think for the modules for we have we say we suggest because we know this could meet specs based on these baseline first principle calculations. Uh, but we should say the thing that wins it's got this functionality and you can show that and you can replicate it that kind of deal and you can have a prize a sub prize for a purely like novel module that we haven't thought of yet like you know if they do something that's not a heated chamber you could have a discretionary prize where you're like oh well, they, you deserve a prize because you're able to completely into what you're doing things. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that that's a whole thing to define. Yeah, I mean as far as the specifics that the deal is what what are we got then actually write in the description the event posting these are the judging criteria and all that. So there's documents that we have to have for all all those parts. Um Well, now I guess we still have the question of commitment. Um, like, what are the? We have a couple of action items already. So, the development of the documentation for onboarding and collaboration, which people that sign up for the challenge will need to understand before they're able to contribute. Getting them accounts to the wiki. So that's going to be a rather. Uh, I mean, it's, good. it's not going to be a huge task, but it's going to be something that someone needs to, or people need to be aware of. Rough draft of the announcement, um, like looking at the slides that we have. Yeah. Um, formula for the success criteria, which we're still kind of working on. We haven't really come to any defin anything definitive yet. We just have to maybe pick out a few different features that we think can um, you know, accurately measure the amount of contribution. I come up, uh, right, right. Um, mm -hmm. yes. There's all the other stuff as well. <laughs> it's like, you know, outside of Hero X as well to try to keep tabs on. Well. And so, outreach marketing, people need to, should start trying to generate interest and in seeing where they can get the event posting itself is, is the call to contribution here's bam this is what we're about contribute like this so a video and things like that we have to provide all the onboarding materials for people to get trained up if they want to participate and lay out all the rules so the exciting part happens at the launch where this is where okay we'll see our people starting and starting to post files we'll probably seed some files with Starting, starting, or maybe we don't. We don't even seed any files. Uh, it probably would be a good idea to seed or have placeholders and modular breakdown structure where, okay, th these are the modules we know of that need to be developed. Stuff like that. That we can seed a bunch of that, and then we the thing from there would be okay. So are people? How are people interacting? And are they uploading files? Is actual design being generated and stuff like that? We probably want to have stuff like. Uh, regular check-in meetings like you know daily scrum of everybody so we're discussing okay what's the best way to do it and then 
something like that where it's also a real uh, real real event where people can collaborate uh, just just on some kind of a meeting platform where we just meet and probably discuss okay here's the best things we came up with and things like that so it's it's actively managed and there's a sense of community that people are moving forward uh, something like that which unless somebody comes up to be like a community manager I'll probably be doing that job unless we find somebody who can take that uh, so I mean we'll need like a technical manager probably a community manager uh, for that and we'll see we'll see uh, as we go into it if any people come forth that want to take on those roles as a yeah or if someone provides a budget for that but as we uh, reach out to the different people that that can support it. We'll find we'll find what people are bringing to the table. could see if we can generate a budget for the, the manager roles so community manager technical manager uh, that's probably something we want to ask during the, the interest getting phase or the support basically the sponsorships phase maybe there's some people that hey they're, they're really excited about that role or something we can see what happens So yeah, so we talked that I think we can do, the latest was we can get a dozen people contributing 25k, of which OSC would be one look after looking at the budget and stuff like that. So yeah, we definitely want to do that. There needs to be some support. One is one part of that is going to be the fee for the, the event, so probably we're going to need to do like raise 300k like if it's 250k challenge for the reward there's a little overhead like 25k would be a fee I'd like to see 25k for a manager position or more like that would be like maybe six months of management six well it doesn't make have to be 25k doesn't get you, that would be only uh, 4k a month probably need somebody that's like more like 10k a month or something for someone that's really good uh, between 4 and 10k probably someone's on top like a really good community manager or something so the budget breakdown in general so you have mm -hmm. you have 12 roles you have you, you want this amount of people to fill this role for a particular position and then you say 25k for that and then you have yeah. the prize pool and whatever other, other overhead you think mm -hmm. so that's all that would have to be done as well in addition to the other things well, I think 4K per month might be enough for a community manager. Uh, but if it's like seasonal work, like it's not a full time position forever, and they're like, they may be doing other things, like this may be their full time job, or they, um, yeah, I mean, there's, there's a startup subreddit, um, there's like job posting websites where you know, I can look up and see how much a community manager normally makes. So I, I wouldn't say, a competitive salary is like a full-time startup company um, but just enough to you know attract someone talented and uh, it makes a big difference like hackathons that have dedicated staff versus like being all volunteers yeah if we could find somebody good 
it helps if they can work remotely. Yeah, exactly. And, yeah. Of course. Or have experience with previous communities. Like we can see previous communities they've been part of. I was thinking of a person like Jono Bacon, who's a well-known community manager, but him, that's if you're going to get someone of his caliber, it's probably like we're talking 10K. Yeah. I mean, we need someone really good for the for that to succeed. That's a critical role. <clears throat> so if we can find somebody at 4K, that would be good. But I, I really want, I'd really want somebody really good at that. That they also be bringing their own communities to it. Right. You know. Oh, sure. That'd be part yeah. Of yeah. You know, open source community members would be interested. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of the like out of the discussions with people we can reach out to right now we'd, we'd start getting getting a good handle on what the level of interest is so probably um, just first outreach to see if we're actually getting traction on this or people think this is crazy and maybe maybe people think this is too crazy we'll have a hard time getting funds or something but I don't know we'll see uh, I think we could probably sell this mm -hmm. So what, what should we do today then? suggest that it's it's towards the end of the apprenticeship where where then I could do the technical management so we'd be freed up from this because right now if we launch it we got to be able to manage it uh, I wouldn't have any time to, to manage the technical side of it at all December 22nd -ish. yeah like December 1st or December tw yeah December yeah I'd say December 22nd we're done with uh, with our stuff and then um, I would say that Christmas gift to the world for 2021. The, the budget breakdown as well. I mean, you can kind of already have the numbers, so that, that could change, but having a template. Yeah, I think uh, throw down the numbers, see what comes out when we actually start talking to people. So, uh, yeah. You have the links of the, those slides you were showing, showing earlier. Um, it's the one Which where one? we were all just writing in, in for your OS. That's a, that's linked on the first page. The day working doc from last week. Yeah, on the day nine on the working doc today. The working doc from last week under incentive challenge.
so are there any any other major questions or anything like that or um, I mean because we want to get to okay do, who wants to work on something or maybe if you don't you don't um, or the intent was um, as, as we said if yeah we can uh, put this this all into something something that can something that's just a little bit easier maybe than the, the sheet like I, I think this like it's good for kind of outlining but for actually breaking down the work and assigning or yeah not assigning it people can freely leave, like come and go to a particular part of the projects mm -hmm. just out and, and it doesn't even have to apply just to hero X it's I mean it's to everything we're, all, we're building the eco home we're doing hero X we're trying to do business development and brainstorming just kind of keeping it all together I would say. I'm not looking at that today. Yeah. Just, okay. just try something out. Try something different. See if it works. If it doesn't, obviously we have a sheet still. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's got to be easy. Open, open it up to people who aren't even here. Um, but, I mean, I can't commit to anything right now. Um, I don't. I don't know how involved I will be with the Hero X challenge. I mean. I can't commit to anything. Mm -hmm. How about you, Ken? Maybe uh, let's go through our... This is not too much? Well, it's like after. I mean, it's, it's now and it's until it ends. <laughs> uh, so... The idea was the Saturdays we would work on some collaborative development things like where some of the assets are relevant directly to the, I mean, maybe don't think of as directly as CRX, but all the assets are common, like like instructionals for how to do things. How do we collaborate on a free CAD and other things? Those are things that are universal. Not, they're not just Hero X. Um, for Hero X, the specific things are specifying, okay, here's, uh, we're getting specific on a kind of product which is relevant to what we do. Well, if, when we build the printer here, we feed off of that a little bit. We're saying, okay, we already thought about some of the specs and goals for that. So, I mean, I think it's all related. Um, in many ways, some things are pretty direct, like, well, onboarding instructionals, that's pretty much relevant at all times. Um, and we have the, the, the page for onboarding, but... Um you know, maybe that's something that can just be refined or maybe you don't want to send just the link to the page because then that, you know, that links to other things. Maybe just send it all in some kind of document. Like, you know, you have to... Uh, well, for the challenge, it has to be clean. It's, it's going to have to have its own presence. There's going to be a website on Hero X. I mean, we'd have to... Probably the easiest thing is to create a bunch of organizing, well-edited well pages on a wiki. And whatever infrastructure we set up, like for communication, there will be the forum. Mm -hmm. So forum wiki, whatever real-time communication we use and, uh, for video and stuff. So that's that's all. I mean, well defined, and those are all things we gotta determine and, and move forward with. So I mean, each each of those things has to be very specific. Smart goals. Specific, measurable. Yeah. Measurable. Uh, I would like to be involved. Mm-hmm. So you think it would help if, if there was more of like a dashboard approach and you see like, okay, this is what is out here for this. Do you want to help with any of it? It should be simple. It should be something that people can, can manage themselves. But just some 
such a location where you see the work available and you can assign yourself to it and you can remove yourself from it when you feel like yeah. you've done oh, so that's called a scrum board man we need a scrum board we used scrumming before but they folded so we don't have a good scrum board right now yeah, there's, there's Kanban boards available like in only office I showed you there's stuff that's similar to that that's free but you know, something that can, can work and that's easy and uh, anyone can yeah. jump in and and public facing as well, so people can see the progress. We liked the the scrummy thing because it was embeddable in the wiki, so you can keep it organized with what you're working on and stuff yeah. like that. Scrummy. I'll, I'll look. I'll yeah, yeah, but it's not up. You can't really see it anymore. You can see some records of it on our website, but yeah, that's what I mean. I'll, I'll yeah. just look at what it was and mm. see what is similar out there right. now. Right. Now, what about? Are you moving on a, on a forum? You're, you're moving forward on that? Or what's the next step on that? I need to actually try to log in. That's okay. the like I, I haven't. But that's <laughs> super relevant for the for the incentive challenge because we want to have the discussions there. The technical discussions would go forward on there. Right. But that's what I was saying like about all the different projects as well. Like that's something completely separate from Hero X and that's something that I'm, like, I'm just kind of working on. But it's still yeah. something that, like, if I got, I got Hero X. Well, I mean, maybe home, and then there's this course, and then there's all the other ad hoc things. That I would say call that is the Hero X because it's going to be mm -hmm. core for the Hero X as far as communication and seeing how people uh, contribute. Right. So maybe say, okay, so can can you maybe frame your Hero X activity as okay? That's my contribution to that or something like that. That's fine. I mean, that that's that's something yeah. I'll work on, and you know, I, I think finding a solution for managing the 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 work that needs to yeah. be done is, is pretty simple. You shouldn't have to rebuild. You know, may, in the future, maybe you want to do something OSC specific, like. So you're talking about some scrum board? Yeah, a little or bit more. Now. Like I've I've seen some pretty intricate like, like there's a scrum board and then mm -hmm. there's like big community management where people are in there. They have a profile. They they have you know things are tracked that they've worked on and there's certain you can mm -hmm. maybe attribute certain attributes to them, like maybe they're more affili affinity toward marketing or affinity toward management or affinity toward design or development. Mm -hmm. and, um, and obviously nice, easy, crisp UI. So, um, I mean, that's, that's something. But that's, that's something else that, that's like a brainstorming thing on my end. Like I have to yeah. mock it up. Something you're going to like compose from existing pieces or... Or you just t oh. use some kind of a turnkey solution there? No, it would just be a it would be a separate solution, but something that uh, others could use as well. But yeah. That's, but something that's already based or structured yeah. around existing project management and methodology. So not just using some platform, but doing what? Um, or you're just gonna use some platform? Well, for for Hero X or for right now, it, it just has to be some platform that works. Mm -hmm. and that's easy and user friendly yeah in the future developing something that's a little bit more specific once we see um, there's there's a use case for, for certain yeah things. the thing about one such a platform is like a lot of the protocols that we use here have to get refined and it's like we have to get in the groove okay here's how we do certain things because otherwise you put it up and it kind of doesn't ma match the way we work right you know what I mean that's that's the challenge so that's never going to happen and that's why we have the wiki because it's like okay if you need something just embed it in there uh, otherwise, it's like a totally like pre-designed solution, and it's just not gonna work because it's gonna change tomorrow. <laughs> We're changing too fast. You know. That's a comment on that, I think. Because I, before, I mean, there was people who came up with that and they started working on something, and then it's like before you know it, it's just no longer relevant because you know things are not stable in terms of well-defined processes that we use. So if new people come on, they might have different processes or whatever. So it's the thing about you know stable organization and like a stable process versus constantly evolving. So that's um, so the lightweight solution right now or a mashup of them is kind of the way to go. And mashup is like I mean I mean yeah the, the, the wiki, wiki is like the central core component. It's just like this is on the this is linked on the wiki now, but it slides and it's not. It's just not as helpful as it could be as far yeah, as sure. project like it's just it's you can use it for a certain purpose or for any purpose but is it really suited for that purpose that's that's my thing with with this in particular
like like I said, just something quick, something that doesn't really get in the way or involve a lot of overhead with time and trying it to see if it works and seeing if it integrates with the wiki and uh, also this course is like the one of the main things we need to have up and hopefully sooner rather than later but obviously yeah. by the time the challenge comes around so, yeah, that's definitely doable I think What else? Friends, any comments on yourself or anything? Paul? What? Just let me know what to do. Uh, I mean, I'm happy to advise, uh, but I'm pretty tapped out in terms of like additional involvement. Right. You know, I'll do the marketing team that I was working on before, but there needs to be like more structure on how we do these games because I don't know what we we gain nothing. Like, I don't know what, I mean, I know we're supposed to be working on something, but I still have no idea what that is. I don't know what we did. But so it's too unstructured to, to give meaningful, uh, yeah. meaningful direction for anybody. That's how I feel. I, I need structure. I need, personally, that's how I work. Um, so when we just, like, come in, we just start throwing ideas around, and there's a lot of talk about, you know, each and every little thing. No, I don't know what to do. What to do about that? I mean, uh, what we're trying to take on here, it's uh, yeah, it's a pretty, pretty hairy thing. Maybe we don't have the the bandwidth to to do it all. Um, so, yeah.
put our marketing, like I said, the marketing for Hero X, we market for the house. Like everything that we're going to do for Hero X or for the 3D printers, mm -hmm. why not just put that into what we really yeah. need, which is the house? Yeah. So, you know, that's how I feel. Mm, that's, that's a good point. And it's sort of like we're trying to create things. Mm hmm. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's a lot, you know, I want to hear what you guys want to be doing, but, okay, so if, say, um, then what do we do on Saturday, then, um, I mean, I hear that, that point, I mean, how do you feel about, okay, we've got to focus on the house, what's your thought on that? Um, I, I, I do think we need to focus, I do think we need to focus more, uh, for sure, um, I think this challenge is that, if you're when you're trying to put together something like that, the Hero X, there's a long period of time between when you have to <laughs> submit documents to Hero X and all that, and when it actually starts. Yeah. Um. So I understand uh, having this meeting. Um. And I mean. I'm not, I am definitely an ideas person, so I, like, these meetings uh, aren't going to bother me, but I, I uh, hear what Prince is saying, because I, I have a lot of friends who say the same thing, um, uh, and so, I mean, just generally on the point that he was making about us focusing more, I think that that is, that is important. That's part of the reason why I'm not making commitments. Um, I would like to focus. Uh, yeah, I, I I feel like that's the part of the challenge with uh, a lot of the things. Yeah, we just we yeah, we just need to pick something. Yeah. And I really break down what needs to be done. You, know, you have the general thing and then like, alright, I'm going to work specifically on this and bring it to completion. I mean, if we focus on the house, how long do you think that will take to be done? Because, I mean, we could not, not that on it, really put our time into working on this or the 3D printer or whatever, you know, do the, whatever the next thing that we need to do is. Mm -hmm. so oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, more more like the one thing at a time thing that's definitely doable we can we can do that i thought it might be interesting to um since in my view the, the things are quite related and just kind of live in it so i see that there being the potential of spawning i mean over the long term like you know that, that all goes forward so that's kind of how i operate but if you if you're thinking of it uh, maybe shorter term or like right now the that kind of you may not buy into the say the much longer um longer kind of term thing so yeah it makes sense um yeah yeah, yeah i mean i'm absolutely interested in any of that uh, we can focus more i want to make sure that you guys too can uh like if we're doing just one thing that's all good too with everybody like i still want to experience this and do this but it feels like you know doing all these things at once is like uh -huh. Like I don't, I feel like I'd be able to learn one thing at one time better, and I'll be able to learn four things at one time mm. spread apart. Another thing I want to say is that uh, working on the house to your satisfying because you have a well understood design, but you built it before. We see mm -hmm. the final product, yeah. So you know where we're going. So it feels satisfying to work. Like I would mm -hmm. go to the workshop to finish the double door today with Kevin. I'm not that fatigued about working on it, but this appears to be like designing the house, like the analogy of the Hero X competition is there's also a lot of like, creative initial work. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, I don't know my skills about like, designing a house, but you can hear that like, okay, our goal is to first design this home, I would be a little hesitant about how to proceed.
and it's a different frame of mind than like showing up and like, okay, screw these two boards together. I'll be like, mm-hmm. okay, I'll, I'll, I can figure out how to use a handrail. And, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, definitely the, the house is the product that we can actually make at the end of the day. Yeah, so we, we can shift more to how about Joshua? What are your thoughts on that kind of focus versus any comments on that? Or I mean, that, that, that's really what I was trying to get at with, with management of tasks and really clear delineation of what needs to be done. I mean, we kind of know from the, the document, but no real commitment, no real. You know, the updates are in the log, you go to the log and read the person. It's, it's, it's just the, I feel like there's a lot of overhead that can be eliminated by using a specific tool specifically for that, that can integrate with, with what we have now. So, mm-hmm. but that, I think that will help people just like, all right, yeah, go look at the, the dashboard. I go to my page. I have these specific things to do, mm-hmm. you know, like outside of like, a, you know, maybe you take a day off and building and you come here and, and you look at what needs to be done to work on that and it's tracked and it, you know what the progress is mm-hmm, mm-hmm. should we like so for next Saturday we should uh, make sure the house is finished so do that like actually do the more of the core work like we do Monday through Friday or what do we want to do I would be satisfied if the house were finished instead of setting the deadline for, for next Saturday the next week do you think that's doable? Like it is doable pending the, like us getting the more of the model into the CAD though, because it's like we can't really, we can't really see the whole thing without having the full CAD in place like that at the level of detail that's finished, which we're working on. We're working on, but we got to f- assemble it all into the, the document. That's why I was trying to get the, the workflow of how us, all of us can do that together pretty much at the same time as soon as we have our module so that it's not a big task to collect that at the end of the, that would be like an, another task at the end, but I'm thinking we can do it uh, at the same time using the process we were developing. So if we can do that, if we have something to work from, we can work faster than now. I think that the block is, that's my fault, it's, I mean, we don't have the actual finished complete CAD um, at the level of detail that we need for the build. So that's the block, but if we focus on that and accelerate that, just so just maybe get your mind around, okay, we're going to get that full digital model because otherwise it's going to like whenever we're going to be in a workshop it's going to be like oh, okay now we have to figure out this little detail and there's too many things to keep track of so uh, we need that full CAD model to, to accelerate the the progress in the shop and other than that I mean we build these things in five days well with 50 people but um, at this point I mean we're, we're so far along that uh, we I think Saturday could be we could potentially be pretty much done uh, that's doable, uh, but we have to really do better on a CAD than we're doing right now. If we don't get onto the CAD all, all on the same page on the CAD, it's, it's going to take a little longer. Um, so just maybe try to get your mind around the CAD process, like review what we've done about it, and and try to get everything into CAD. So that's so what I feel about the CAD is like there's that one piece I'm going to miss because it's probably because I'm not that I don't have that much experience in it. Mm-hmm. Like if you say go to the CAD, I'm like I hate looking. Mm-hmm. Like there's so much in the cat for me to like process, but then mm-hmm. I look at like the Google Sheets or like the Build Block Sheet Sheets. That to me, a hundred. I think they're both. They like they both have their place and their purpose and their nice yeah. to both. Yeah. Like those Wall Build Sheet Sheets are amazing to look at. Yeah. It's simple. It shows you what exactly is right there in front of you. Yeah. I need to go where, 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 and then when you look at the cat, it's just I can rotate this wooden you know block 100,000 different directions, and I can zoom in. Out. It still doesn't. It's tell just you. like it's like every it's like every little thing that I could possibly want to know is there, yeah. but I don't need all that. Like I just need to know what's right here, what do I need to build, and how this comes together. But I do understand like needing the full cat and how that works in like the bigger picture. And if I was probably more experienced in it, it would probably be more helpful. But since I'm not there yet, I think those. those well, we need to. Sheets, well, we need the cat to extract the cheat sheets from because. Uh, I mean. So those didn't come. It was the cat and then. Because the cheat sheets came out of the sweet home model for the parts that were correct on it, but there's a few little changes. So, like right now, it's uh, updating the to the final, so we can get the cheat sheets when we take it out of the CAD. We know that it's right, and to get the cheat sheets out, I mean that's 
it's relatively quick, um, but we don't. We're still drawing up the the cat. Like part of the, the cat of putting all that together is a verification step. Like we're verifying that all the modules are correct. We might miss some things when we work on one individually, but you'll see that okay, you know, levels have to line up. Like all everything lines up when you put it into the final CAD, so that it is actually a verification step. Before. So uh, otherwise, we're cutting stuff and then we have to redo it and we're just wasting time. So and it's faster to work in CAD um, in principle than in, than in real real time. So. Yeah, so focus on, um, does that make sense, or? Well, learning CAD has been a huge overhead, not overhead, but it's been a big effort for me also, and I think I'm like finally at the stage of being able to do basic things, and uh, I can see like in FreeCAD there's way to script like, or animate like the shapes appearing and like fasteners going in, Yeah. But that would be a cool tool, but kind of, that's more of an animated cheat sheet how to build the things, and if that's where we're going, I think that's great that we're building it for future generations to be um, faster. Um, but I also, like, being in the workshop, I don't know, I think, like, analyzing our videos, or, I don't know, we can find make a video cheat sheet also. Like, yeah. uh, we don't have video of people assembling our wall modules, but imagine, like, if the previous apprentices had made a video, and they had curated it, and could cut out the mistakes, and, and it was a time lapse, and I don't know, maybe like a cool overhead wireframe where like sure. the parts and screws were flashing as people were putting it in. There was like a screw count. So it's like, okay, this mm -hmm. module takes 68 screws. And every time someone puts it in, I see the number go up. And, um, I think that, that might be helpful. I'm, I definitely watch a lot of YouTube videos and I learn a lot from them. Oh, yeah. Yeah, except the last time we built the first version, that's a little slightly different, so that wouldn't apply right now. Sure. So it's, yeah, it's changing all the time. And yes, all those things in FreeCAD you have exploded part animations. So you can do that readily. You can okay. show things how they blow apart and things come in. Then CAD would be so more useful to me. If I saw it doing yeah. that. Yeah, but that's why that's why we're doing a full CAD so we can generate all those kinds of assets from the animations, cheat sheets, technical drawings, and even the video games and stuff. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'll, I'll so it's we'll yeah. That today, Let's, like just as an action item. So yeah. That's what we're. Yeah, I mean, we could be doing that, and it's, uh, yeah, we should be, we could be, and should be doing that. That's a thing that gets us to the house, which is number one. So now my my concern was like you guys would be burning out from doing that too much, um, but if not, that's what we should be doing. Yeah, I think I'm more than burnout doing all these things instead of just focusing on one. Yeah, yeah, I would have no problem sitting here trying to learn cattle all day. Like that'd be fine with me. Okay. You know, well, let's do it. I can go back, I think probably, my priority right now is to get that house out to a picture, to getting pictures from that for advertising as soon as we can. That's that's like the number one. So we build it, we say, okay, we've got this, we can actually talk about where are we going to build the next one, Here's, you know, looking for clients and stuff like that, showing the actual real one that was built, and that's a more credible case. Yeah. Uh, so. Uh, that is number one priority. So I would gladly go to instead of the incentive challenge work, go to the CAD today. Okay. <coughs> I can do that. Yeah, my CAD won't really as well. <laughs> I could really use the time. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, and how about you, Adundo? What are you up to? What am I up to? You, you wanna? <laughs> are you into doing CAD too, or you, that's too much? Um, I could do some CAD. Yeah. Yeah, man, let's do it. Or you can suggest something else, and I would say that, uh, you know, we're training our own initiatives. If we see something that matches our skills or something we'd rather be doing that we think is helpful to the effort, I think it's okay to put that forward, too. Joshua, are you into more CAD, or do you rather do other stuff? I mean, putting the, adding, so this is a new picture, adding the four pieces took a you know, short amount of time, but I think we could probably uh, get it done pretty, pretty quickly. What, four pieces what? Um, Updating some CAD? I, I updated yesterday, so it okay. was uh, 12 oh, yeah. and 13, and then oh, the, 20, the contribution from Voxel was, uh, 
is corrupted. Like it crashed okay, like okay. that, so I uploaded my version for 16. And awesome. Um, yeah, no, that's that's good. Um, I mean, just as far as as far as action items, I'll, I'll continue working on that today. I don't I don't have a problem. I just I always like from this session, we always should have something concrete to you know go and pursue. So like this course. Um, looking for project management and then free CAD for me. CAD. That's what I have for myself. I'll just do CAD since that's most important. I have a curiosity. Uh, is there a plan for the new house when we're finished? Like, is it going to house? Um, studio, studio, film studio. It's going to be a <laughs> film studio. Okay. Cool. I'm going to do my open source Panopticon. Mm -hmm. You're going to film yourself. Well, it's going to be like podcasting. Uh, I envision also, um, I mean, actually the, well, photo shoots. Uh, so set up the three monitors and, yeah, podcasting or possibly interview studio if any people are come here. But also like, um, you know, I kind of joke, jokingly talked about the control room, but also like remote control, like on stuff that's um, observing the facility and possibly controlling machines through that, exploring the automation part so that kind of stuff but but an experimental house that also will have the the other part of that is the aquaponics which will be integrated with closed loop water systems so we plan on one adding the back to demonstrate the the addition of another thousand square feet and sure. two is the greenhouse for processing waste so closed loop which is crazy so yeah and Katarina doesn't it's want like that we have a biodigester at our place we're just outgassing the gas, um, but she doesn't really want those kinds of crazy experiments there. It's a little too much for her. Sure. So uh, we're going to take it to the new one, all experimental kind of stuff. That, And then, of course, we have panels on the top, so we have the nickel iron batteries and renewable energy system, uh, that kind of stuff. So, yeah, just continuing the experimentation on some cutting-edge stuff. Just the additional 1,000 foot aquaponics and greenhouse, is that part of the two-week build that you're imagining? Um, don't know. Like right now, no, that we got to do, um, our promise wants to be the, you know, just building the base module. Um, I don't think that we want to do that because it kind of complicates. It's not, it's not like building the CD go home, which is what we're, what we were promising. Yeah. So we probably got to do the, the base one, just replicate this one. If we ever, so Jesse is coming, and I mean, we're possibly can do it in a way where we build all the modules here and actually take it to a real site to install. That would be a workable option. I don't know if logistically that's going to be possible. I mean, we don't have that option right now, but it's possible that with a recent collaboration in Kansas City, we, we could actually get land and like just fast track it through through the codes and stuff like that and make it happen. Um, yeah. So we'll see. We'll see what happens with that. But I'm thinking, like, as far as schedule, like December, after finishing, because uh, realistically that would be a possible time. But at that time, try to do a build somewhere else, so that we're getting that full experience. All of us, like, actually getting a client, and then we're negotiating the codes. If we haven't done it by by the time with. Uh, yeah, I mean, realistically speaking, I don't know what's going to happen on the September 1 through the 14th. Um, but definitely want to get one experience where we build outside. Yeah. Outside of these gates. Yeah. You mentioned in September that we would be laying a new foundation, which I am, like, very uh, eager to yeah. learn. Is, would that be for, like, a second house that we're building somewhere else? Well, that would be so... It has to be one the seed home somewhere, whether it's here or somewhere else. Okay. So, um, logistically speaking, I mean, we might even divide the two, like do the foundation here. I mean, we if it's somewhere else, the foundation has to be there, so we might travel, but that doesn't meet the needs of the participants in the workshop, and the foundation has to be there before we, well, in the 14 days we can do foundation like early and then wait a day or two to actually do the house. But we want to get that experience. That's part of the 14 days. Like the whole process wants to be there. Yeah. yeah I mean, I'd be interested to hear from other people, but I don't think foundation was part of the 
original apprenticeship, but why that? No, I thought it was. Oh, it is? Okay. Well, I mean, the 1 through the 14th is is a full house build. Okay. So that's to have a foundation. Okay. Yeah. We're promising that, you know, here's the A to Z from foundation to roof. Yeah. Well, I consider learning the foundation as part of, leading part of my as a workshop participant. Um, yeah. But, you know, I'm curious if anyone else feels that with stuff like changing the, like they only want ready um, made foundations to build on top of them. Well, that's not what we said in an announcement, though, so. Okay, yeah. You, you just Does anyone? I, I, I didn't really think about it too much. I just assumed it was the full house, and, and not, like you said, the foundation has to be included in the house. So that's yeah, because for a lot of, I mean, a lot of people want to learn that. Yeah, I just didn't, I didn't note that in particular. Yeah, and you know, we got a good handle on it, so it's a, it's a good experience to see how you can do it really efficiently, and it's not that hard if you know what you're doing there. And yeah, just sharing all those insights, because it's kind of a formidable task before you do it. Uh, it kind of is almost intim like yeah I thought it was kind of intimidating but after you do it once it's like um, it's not too bad it's pretty easy yeah and there's techniques like if you mess up you can compl still completely like restore the smooth surface you can do what's known as self-leveling concrete where you just pour like a very thin layer on top so say you like really did it bad and it looks like like crap you can you can still level it with a product another product that could then becomes your finished floor. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You just mentioned you wanted to make sure you met the needs of the participants, which I wanted to assure you that I totally did. So. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so we'll just do CAD all day. I love it. <laughs> well, CAD is broadly interpreted. Yeah. I like to work on visualization. Yeah. Video oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like um, basically house related. But yeah, of course it's a. As I go along on these, I like today for example, I, was, I did the second story uh, door, and yeah, I, I just put slides. Because what I noticed is uh, and that's probably useful for you guys too. I noticed that you go through the details, and yeah, you get it, and then you go back to it because you just forget all the stuff you actually looked at. Dimension. So I'm, all I'm doing is like screenshot one piece of information okay that that piece was th that I just recorded because there's a lot of details that you end up needing in the future and then you have to extract it again so I'm just making it simple by by documenting it leaving a like a long paper trail behind all the designs so that in the future we can just study it more effectively but that's that's useful like you really have to do that because then the next person <laughs> will have that resource as opposed to trying to figure out oh, what is it in the CAD can I even open the CAD and stuff like that or can I even find the CAD? <laughs> so well, yeah. Doing that in the Google slides. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I did that. There's a link to it on the convenient door detail, the first link in today's doc. Turns out, uh, yeah. I mentioned that the two by twelve ends up being a exact fit for the door. So it's actually the second fl floor door is relatively easy. So the header is just the right size so that the door fits right underneath it without any any more spacers or anything like that. Which is very convenient. It was a pleasant surprise. It's almost as if it were like designed for 2x12s. Which uh, simplifies it for us. Alright. Well that sounds good. So then anyone else working on it? I mean the priority for anyone contributing to this is now we got to get the full digital model uh, so that all the documentation assets can come out of it. So join that effort. Okay.